good morning. Hi, happy Monday. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Oh my God. Can I tell I can we get totally sidetracked right out of the gate? Like, what is Opie? <laughs> you know, I haven't listened to Opie in like um, seven months. First of all, I've never listened to Opie. I should clarify that. Like, as like an enjoyment, as like a like a regular thing. Like, I've never like time for Opie, but I haven't even like checked in on his show. Um, in forever, and I, and I had it on because somebody put it in our Discord. Discord.gg slash nlo, and it's just like. I mean, what is this guy doing? What is this guy doing? <laughs> Fake Ian Hawk says, Opie does the same show you do. I mean, in what world? <laughs> You're insane. It's not even a good troll. It's a different world. That's a different world. Um, Opie does the same show you do. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. I don't want to get too uh, gross about it. Maybe we have to watch Opie. Um, dear God. I mean, just what? Sorry, I forgot to set up one thing before the show this morning to enhance our entire well-being anyway welcome to the show hit the like button do me a favor we're gonna have uh somebody in charge of that today i imagine somebody decent how about justin kimple he's a reliable old soul justin kimple you're in charge of likes um so justin kimple you're in charge of likes. is that okay um, welcome. It's uh, December. We've got a lot going on. I just uh, I saw yeah, I, I was I haven't listened to MLC from Saturday, but it's so funny. You know, that Starbucks ambassador guy is doing exactly what I said he would do. He's literally like every MLC show. He runs over there and, and writes a super chat about Melton. Uh, you know what Melton did on his show about me yesterday? It's like We've literally already done this, Starbucks Ambassador, where every day you go tell on me to Kevin. As if, first of all, as if Kevin gives a fuck. Let me just tell you something about Kevin. Kevin's a giant fan of Melton, okay? I don't care what he says. Every time he insults me, it's because he wants, because he respects me and he wants to ride my dick. I know, I know. Beloved Chatter says Starbucks is a grifter drifter. <laughs> That's a good term. Is that a real term? A grifter drifter? And that's what I've been talking to my team about. We gotta we gotta really learn how to keep the grifter drifters over here on one grifter. You know, I'm just one man, I'm one grifter in a sea of hundreds. And that's the way it is. Hey, uh, just real quick so people don't get butt hurt and uh, maybe so Flat Cat can get 24 hours notice. <laughs> we will not be doing a show uh, Tuesday morning. I, I have a prior engagement. Um, so there might, there'll be a show Tuesday at some point. And God, hopefully we get back to training Tuesday. You know, you guys have been very lax in your duties around this restaurant. Look at fear. Fearless is getting the likes. Let's get Fearless and Justin Kimple on this. <laughs> um. Anyway, my cat mouse. Thank you for being a member. I don't know what that means. Dang lizard. Thank you for being a member. I don't know what that means. Oh, there's a show today. Instructions were unclear. Now I gifted Facebook stars to Opie. Yeah, I don't even know what a Facebook star is. I don't even know what a Facebook star is. Uh, oh, do you have a court tomorrow, Mountain? Shh. 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 
Oh, man. We got a lot of uh, first of the month gifts coming in. And that's going to remind me that we do have a new game today. And Smokey the Spurg is going to get a play for $50. Smokey the Spurg is going to get a play our new game. Smokey Spurg. And also, uh, wow, Wizard Nug already with the 20. I hate the first of the month because everybody's trying to get on the wall. Everybody's trying to get their knot. Everybody's trying to get their knot. KB is watching. I hope so. I hope so. Hi, KB. Hit the like button, you flowers. Uh, Daylaw, thank you for uh, gifting a membership as well. Let's not overlook that. And Jimmy... Uh, for being a member. Okay, so look, new game. New game. Smokey the Spurg and uh, and uh, Wizard Nug are going to get to play our new match game, okay? And how this works is we're going to get... Um, <laughs> that's a... Uh, we ran out of money for sound effects for the game. Anyway, it's called Match Game. Smokey the Spurg, you'll be the first to play. You gotta pick you gotta pick two squares to flip over. If they match, there could be prizes involved. I just need you to name two squares, okay? There's a grid. And Wizard Nug, the same thing. Now people are saying gay. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm running out of ideas, so we've got to try new things over here, and one of them we came up with in the old boardroom, match game. Match game. <laughs> so, so look, yeah, we're trying this for December. It's match game. Smokey the Spurg, you get two squares, and um, and then uh, Wizard Nug, you get two squares, but, you, but Wizard Nug, I would wait. You know, you got to wait. Uh, the beauty of this game is remembering it's a memory game you know, they used to call it memory and um you know so there's lots of different uh prizes under there i don't want to give anything away you know it's part of like a fun new game it's prize night yeah 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 yeah. it's prize night no we're not giving away any money um lance says your usual grift was working just fine no 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 you've got to reflavor your grift You've got to reflavor your grift. You can't just keep grifting the same old, same old grift. You got to keep. That's why we're coming up next month. We're coming out with uh, NLO coffee. And we're really excited about that. We've put zero work into it. And <laughs> it's going to be really, really good. Oh, no. Get people to like shit. Fuck. Imagine hitting a like button. Feed the algorithm, you pussies. That would have been better for was right. Wow, my tummy hurts. Let's try it one more time from the top. Justin Kempel, huh? This guy can't get people to like shit. Imagine hitting a like button. Feed the algorithm, you pussies. Hold on. Somebody said I stole this from Steel Toe. Is that real? Did wow, they... my tummy hurts. Wow, okay. <laughs> okay, so Smokey the Spurg has played his squares. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, no. Let's see. Uh, B3 and E3. Says Smokey the Spurg. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. We're going to go B3. That's a Chad. I'm sorry. That's a Chad. That's uh, rough. That's rough. That could have gone either way. B3 and E3. Instant roast. It's an instant roast under E3. Um, where I get a well, I'll roast anybody. In the chat room. It's an instant roast. That's the prize. But thank you so much you for playing. You suck my motherfucking battleship, you cracker. Okay, so next is uh, is going to be Wizard Nug. He gets two squares. And then Dan G just uh, gave um, 20 memberships. Wow. So he'll also get two squares. Um, so that's it. That's it. And, um, you know, 
That's how we play a new game. That's a new game. Wizard Nug, what are your two scores? A1. A1. And and what else? We don't have all day. A1 and E4. And then, Dan, have your picks ready after we seize the day. Okay, A1 and E4. We got A1. I don't even know what's under them because we scramble them. Instant roast. Okay. Wow, instant roast is popular. And then uh, E4, E4. Oh, that's a Chad. That's a Chad. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's a Chad. <laughs> Whenever you come upon a Chad on the game, look, it's like it's like getting everything you loved and cherished stolen. Pay to play on Spurgtopia Discord, everybody. Uh, GG slash uh, Spurgtopia. Oh, did I say dystopia? <laughs> uh, grift shift slows the drift. Pot awful coin grifter drifter, I think. Credit where it's due. Yeah, I didn't know that. I never heard that. It's a great uh, It's a great one. Dan G, what are your squares? Dan G, you, you, got, uh, you got squares. It's rigged, somebody says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I hit another nut, I'll play again. Uh... NBA is my specialty. I don't know what that means. But, yeah, credit to Jesse P.S. Grifter Drifter, if he came up with that. I love I love that. Okay, Dan G. Did Dan G pick his uh, squares? Otherwise, we got to move on. You know, I don't want the, uh, the, the worst thing about these games, you know, really just. B2C1. B2C1. B2. Ban anyone for a week. <laughs> That's what we have under B2. And then C1. Change the top. <laughs> okay, well, it didn't work out for you. Um, But thank you for playing. And that's how we play Match Game. <laughs> Gay! Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. Lots of stuff for you today. Did you know that uh, Haley Sachs, a.k.a. Mrs. Dow Jones, has started her own podcast? Michael Ray Hay Bauer has done a Monday video. It's uh, his Monday walk and talk video. He is sitting on the toilet the entire time. No, Patrick, he didn't get up and walk and talk. Patrick, he didn't get up and do miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Come on. it's I find it hard to believe. You're telling me he didn't run a marathon while he did a show? Okay. And then, of course, it wouldn't be uh, a normal week if we didn't talk about chat. The, 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 the uh, people that didn't want trouble with Chad that now want trouble with Chad are, are piling up. Brad Thacker, this guy, you know, who I guess has known Chad since Ohio. Chad says they don't know each other at all. Brad Thacker says they've done dozens of shows together. Who are you going to believe? I don't know. But... Brad seems to have a lot of people in Ohio who have a lot of dirt on Chad and really want to spill it and get it out there. And they've kind of bit their tongue and they've kind of not said too much about it. Chad manages people. You know, this is what I've learned. Chad manages people. We all saw Do you remember that episode of uh, MLC where Kevin was like calling Godfrey? And Chad freaked the fuck out. We saw it in his eyes. And Chad, like, live on his show, had to, like, call Godfrey and do damage control. Like, don't listen to God. Uh, that's not true. Uh, like, we saw that panic in his eyes. So that's the kind of, like, um, you know, thing that lets you know that Chad really likes to manage and control people. What he tells them. He thinks, first of all, nobody has enough time. Nobody has as much time as Chad to, like, spin Chad to people so chad's constantly calling everybody and 
doing damage control. I mean, like, Chad's calling people about me. Like, I talked to a bunch of people about you today. It's like, what? Chad and I have no relationship. We, have, we don't work together. We don't do anything together. Chad called a bunch of people about me today. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, I guess. So Brad Thacker has all these mutual acquaintances in common with Chad, and Brad has started getting these people to agree to talk. They want to talk. We got this guy, Joe Howard. I haven't spoken with him yet, um, who did a show with Chad and Florentine in Ohio. Those are the ones he flew home for just mere weeks before Thanksgiving with uh, Cousin Jill, remember? So Chad Chad uh, flew home and did a show with this guy, Joe Howard. Joe Howard has some dirt. Joe Howard has some stories. And Joe Howard's bit his lip for a long time. Because people don't want this kind of drama. People don't want this kind of trouble. You know, dr this weird, stupid drama with Chad. So people don't really talk about it. And that lets Chad run around going like, no, I'm cool with this guy. That guy likes me. No, we're fine. You're stupid. All this kind of stuff. Well, all these people are starting to wake up to, like, Chad's, and you know, criminal history and obsession with lying about everything. <laughs> and it's just all starting to come out. So Brad Thacker started, like, tormenting Chad over email. And Chad started replying to him, saying, like, let's go. Ask me all your tough questions. So Brad Thacker started doing this, like, uh, Q&A, basically, on... Um, online and it's just i mean we're just gonna just keep pointing out i guess lie after lie after lie after lie that chad um keeps saying so the thackering is beginning i mean i don't know what this what chad did to this brad thacker guy but brad thacker's working hard um to make sure that chad is going down and here's an example. Uh, let me just show you uh, one of the things that we're going to be, uh, kind of how we're going to be doing this. <laughs> here's, um, sorry, where am I? Bing. This was an email exchange uh, when Chad was feeling froggy and answering stuff. How did, uh, so Brad Thacker says to Chad, how did Trevor Hoffman not beat your ass when you saw his shoes on eBay? For those who don't know, Chad allegedly but not you know pretty much how does chad how do we find out chad did anything he gets caught so chad stole a, a bunch of nikes from like friends of his playing basketball like valuable nikes i guess or something and then and then ran and listed them on ebay and then his friends caught him listing their shoes on ebay i mean you can't make this shit up it's wild like you would, you would, if this happened, you'd be like, did you steal my shoes and left them on eBay? And he'd just be like, no, no, those are my used Jordans. Uncle Patty, Mama Backpage taught the floor Newports to play a game with my rusty onion. Yo. Would you like to hear about it? Ouchie. I don't want to hear anything about a rusty onion. What could be turning your little, your little pink asshole rusty red orange? What could be doing that to you? And by the way, real quick, can I just, I'm going to have to bow down, I guess. I'm, I'm going to have to, like, give, give, uh, leave. I think I'm going to do Wednesdays from now on, and Tukey's going to do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Tukey's got, like, 600 people watching the other night or morning. Saturday morning, I wake up, Tukey's got 600 people watching. Last night, the potato had 700 people watching him, and I just said, I got to give up. I got to quit. I'm th like, I'm not kidding. I was joking about stopping doing mornings, but let's be honest, you know, from four to 6 a.m., I'm, I'm uh, ramping up to 400 viewers. If I go at 4 p.m., we're instantly at five. Maybe you guys want an afternoon show and you don't even know it. Because what, because what, you know, I, what, I wake up at 4 a.m. to come on here for, you know, so it's wild. Somebody says over 800 last night. I mean, that's crazy. The potato. So these are bigger shows than me now. I, I can't, I'm not like Seal where I go, well, you got to do the movie math on it. No, no, no. These are bigger shows than me now. <laughs> these are bigger shows.
Potatoes, 800, 800 views, and Tukey's, 650 views. These are bigger shows than me now. <laughs> buying views. They're not buying views. <laughs> They're just, they, they got to be, KB is going to love this. I don't know. I, everyone can't be buying views. That's, that's not the answer, right? KB is not going to like you trying to take his spot. Well, first of all, you're all fucking retarded. When I say 4 p.m., it's 7 p.m. on the east. <laughs> I'm on the west coast, so I'm sorry. I don't, I don't uh, flip it for you idiots. Nobody's trying. First of all, fuck Kevin Brennan. He doesn't own shit. <laughs> you, you guys act like nobody should go live when Kevin goes live. I will. I will. <laughs> no one gives a shit. You think Kevin owns 1 p.m.? <laughs> no one cares. And Kevin wouldn't even care. You think Kevin could take his eye off the ball long enough to fuck with me? No, he's got Shuli to bitch about. But nobody's nobody's going up against Kevin. Like, first of all, I will. I, I like one one p.m. is just not like a good time to do a show here. Nobody wants to do a show at lunch. One p.m. I'm either napping or I'm or I'm uh you know sucking off some cripple man and some sort of parking lot some sort of insane hobo day law thank you for the super sticker dk i don't know what this is about this donation's for flat cat jessica to pitch pick match game numbers her skill at running the like button is unmatched i hope she wins a gift card to the gun armory in sock rapids and can buy a nice pearl handled revolver Oh, yeah, get her one of those little uh, Derringer pistols. And she can keep it in her empty bra. I don't know anything about her chest. So that's rude. Uh, Jessica Flackout, you got to pick some squares now, apparently. And does that mean she goes on the she goes on the wall? This is in her honor. I don't think Flat Cat's ever been on the wall. They don't call her Flat Cat for nothing. That's all, that's all I'll say about the empty bra thing. Okay. They don't call her flat cat for nothing. Are you translated it? It translated to flat pussy, flat pussy, you know, uh, do a few morning shows and a few 7 PM shows any later in floor, poor flat cat will be sleepy. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I like, I don't mind doing the show whenever, but. The numbers don't lie. The, the evening shows get more. The evening show definitely gets more. And we've, we've, uh, oh, God, what is that? Some sort of hair? Um, all right, Flat Cat's going to forfeit her choices here because she's taking way too long. I mean, this is not rocket surgery. And I'm going to stop paying attention. You know, I've asked for the squares. She doesn't want to give the squares. We're going to move on. All right. So now she's typing in corn emojis and stuff when she's been asked to give squares. So I'm going to one minute. Jessica forfeits her squares because she's too dumb to focus. I wonder why, you you know, you're over there making bedazzled keychains and stuff and bitching like you don't get stuff. When is you? Yeah, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Focus. Stop typing corn in and fucking focus. <laughs> yeah, she is out of it. We're like, what squares do you want? She's like, corn, corn. Matter of fact, tomorrow I'm changing all the match game squares. We're going to, we're going to get rid of, um, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to unname all the rows after letters and numbers and we're literally going to put emojis on every column so when you want something you're going to have to be like corn balloon which sounds like something gross <laughs> corn balloon cor uh horse clap well that's a real disease all the money we raise today does go to horse clap we will be we will be uh Trying to solve horse clap. It's a horrible, horrible disease that affects millions of people all the time. Horse clap. All right, Jessica has picked uh, 
Eve, Eve, Eve. Hold on. Oh, no. Now I lost it. Now I lost her squares. Oh, boy. See what happens? E3A1. That's what she's saying. E3A1. Is that going to be the... E3 and A1. It's an instant roast. <laughs> Isn't that what we just did to Jessica? Jessica, who would you like me to roast? Who should we focus on? Who should we make fun of? This is going to take, you know, anything that revolve, involves a follow-up question. This is going to take hours. Who are we roasting? Could it please be Opie? Because I really want to do that anyway. Could it please just be Opie? Fucking Opie. Like, what's going I mean, you really got to be Opie. You really got to be delusional. Roasted corn sounds delicious. Oh. Okay, so Jessica just typed roast producet. Roast producet. I, I, we might have to, Gina Bisconte just got gifted a membership. Wow. Wow. I mean, like, we may have to, we may have to ban Jessica from the chat permanently, like on an ongoing basis. I just, I don't know if there's a dumber roast producer, Joe. I don't really know anything about him and I don't, um, uh, producer Joe. I mean, I'm not going to be the, uh, you picked the stupid one. I mean, like, this is just an example of like, what an idiot this bitch is. I, I, we don't, we've never covered producer Joe. I know nothing about the guy. And you're like, I have an idea. It's, it'd be like, if you came to me and you're like, Daryl Hall, get him. And it's like, okay, I, I'm not a Hall and Oates enthusiast, but I guess I'll go read a couple bio lines about Daryl Hall and then zing him uh, for 13 seconds. It'll be the the dumbest roast we've ever done because I know nothing about him. Producer Joe, uh, he pulls guns on old people and chases them out in his yard with a stick. Producer Joe, he uh, pays for all the views for the Shirley. No I, what? A guy we've never talked about on the show. A guy we've never talked about on the show. And know nothing about. Go get him, Melton. Okay. I'm I'm going off all my producer Joe knowledge because this this is gonna be epic. Great pick, Jessica. Great fucking pick. Whoa, did you uh man, producer Joe and his thumbnails. Whoa, right? With the purple brick wall? F fuck's this guy doing? Purple. Brick wall. Detroit Mike, why roast a behind the scenes guy? No, no, no. Why roast a behind the scenes guy we've never talked about and don't know anything about? He lives in Florida. What a dummy. <laughs> and then Jessica goes, this from a guy who spent a few hours on refrigerator magnets. How dumb are you, you fishy, twat smelling bitch? What do you do you people just hear stuff and then and then just become retarded yeah 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 jessica i spent hours on magnets hours we paused it and then we talked about his magnet for hours now i'm sure if you're addicted to profits it's it felt like hours i mean it might have been two minutes you stupid bitch yeah, you're right. Hours, hours and hours. I went over the magnets. We scrolled and we scrolled and we scrolled and we, oh, we zoomed and unzoomed and zoomed and zoomed. They were only in the frame for a couple of seconds, but God, did I spend hours on it. I spent hours on it. So you're right. You're right. Hey, producer Joe, you stupid bitch. How's Miami? Idiot. You're doing great with all the shows over there on the network. I mean, I don't even know what he's in charge in. What am I roasting? What a dumb, dumb pick. <laughs> I don't know anything about Producer Joe. 
Other than he's not making much money and he'll be unemployed soon if the rumors of the Shuley Network's demise are true. But good one. Hey, remember when you went down to visit with Chad? Ugh. What am I roasting? <laughs> I, and by the way, the way you treated those old people in that, in that elderly home, I agree with. So what am I even roasting? He pulled his gun on an old person. Yeah, a guy with a stick on his lawn. I'll pull a gun, too. I want to pull a gun on Jessica, and she's not even on my property. What? what why would that pop into your head like, oh, producer Joe? Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, okay, it's your money. What else about producer Joe do I know? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, that frog. I mean, what the fuck? What a dumb, dumb pick. What a dumb, dumb pick. Order some stickers. Get yourself a free keychain from Flat Cat Jessica. That's what she's good at. Making keychains nobody wanted. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Mr. Panhandler Patrick still cucking for TS said, No, I'm not. I just don't know anything about it. I haven't turned on a Shuli show. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? I don't need to be a part of the piling on of his demise. I hear the numbers suck. I hear the numbers are falling. Someone says they're all buying views on every show now. I don't know. So no one's cucking it up. Surely fucking lied about me. Fuck him. <laughs> Have I not made that clear? But producer Joe, I don't, you know, this is just a guy who's. I don't know anything about producer Joe. I guess he's a loser. <laughs> I don't. What do you want me to say? It's, a, it's so insane. Mel knows he can rekindle his love affair with Shuley. Right, right. I hope this works. Is, this, is that what this has seemed like? No one wants to fuck Shuley. No one wants Shuley. I'm not, you know, I, 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 I don't know what's true or what's not, but someone said that um, they'd, they've sold seven tickets on that M House Theater gig, which is fucking embarrassing. On 90 different levels. 90 different levels. Um, Hold on. What's going on? DK gifted 10 memberships. So now DK gets to pick some coordinates. Will the DK. Or was that on behalf of Jessica? I forget. No, the other one was. <laughs> uh, no doubt Carlos Danger is dull. Whoa. What is this? I heard producer Joe finger blast senior men at the old folks facility. You should roast Mike David. Just saying. Oh, you would like that when you fake said as an M. Uh, great game reveals the only that only regard retards are donating to this show. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Bill Bixby Caber is right about these. Uh, Kafer is right about these broads already. Ban her. So instant roast means the winner get, yeah, I mean, fucking yes. Yes, it's turned into flat cat Jessica has the worst instincts ever. That's what it's turned into. That and you trying to control the narrative. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Melton is such a liar. He continues the false narrative saying that I'm a stealing, lying, cheating, uncreative, untalented, failed comedian. I have difficulty dealing with all the shit he spews. It's at the point that his vitriol is starting to ruin my successful career. Yeah. I I totally agree, Chad. Melton has also made my life a like a living hell. I always I always think about him. He's he's so harassing that I have difficulty sleeping, taking a shit, and even having sex with my beautiful Mexican wife. Like the the harassment and mental anxiety is so bad. It's even affecting my wife's salsa sales. I, my wife's Salsa sale. We got a fish lunch. I that's so real. That's so real. <laughs> you forget about you forget about it, but um Woo <laughs> Butch is like I check out the window every time I walk to my car. I have to bring my attack Dobermans to work with me. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to ruin Chad's successful career. Look, um, uh, producer Joe was always cool to me. I, I, I'd roast him if I had anything to roast, you know. I think he, like, uh, steals ideas 
a little bit on like very basic derivative uh in basic derivative ways he doesn't really even modify what he's taking uh is that a good burn i don't know but i feel like honestly like he's he's using shuli to like learn how to produce better shows and then he'll move on somewhere else but i i uh if you go to that mouse theater someone was saying on uh reddit if you go to this what this place they're doing a show the bs show just so you know like i'm not nobody's sucking up to surely i just literally don't check it anymore but if you go to this mouse theater website um people are saying so like if you go to uh, all right this uh friday night i guess they got latin comedy night for instance piña coco cherry a latin comedy experience and you go to get tickets so that just for an example this is like this week and you go to get tickets you they show you a seating chart of like what they've sold and the gray ones are what's sold so like eight nine ten uh what a 16 17 18 what do we got five 45 50 53 seats sold you can kind of see it and that's for this this week and then someone went on here and found out if you go to shuli and bob's gig coming up in february that they've only sold seven tickets now look it's in february but they do like four five six seven eight nine ten ten tickets but it is in february <laughs> but where is this even m house theater i don't know like look if we launch onion con and it's like a month after we announced it because remember this is shuli's big november surprise was these gigs so like yeah if i if i announced onion con whatever we're gonna call it it's probably not onion con we announced some sort of meetup here uh vaping Diego says that theater is paid to rent it out everything is man everything is when tom segura comes to your to your local fucking arena or theater how do you think that works i hate to i hate to tell you he pays to rent it out <laughs> so this is not an insult everybody thinks it's like an insult like anybody can rent that theater out it's like yeah i mean that's normal rules every theater can be rented out every arena if if you get enough money together you can rent madison square garden for your friend's birthday party the thing is it like it usually is a production company that will take on the risk associated with putting up the half a million dollars to put on that event to sell the seats to make the money back but it's not a it's not a burn to be like they rented out that theater it's like that's how shows work I mean that that's how every every venue except a comedy club that books people works. So I don't know. Anyway, the point is, thank you, Jessica. We love you. Your keychains are awesome. If you ordered stickers, they're they're packed up and on the way. <laughs> and everybody who orders uh stickers from our website at nobody likes science.com slash store. While supplies last, you get a beautiful handmade uh, onion keychain by Flat Cat Jessica. She's good for some stuff. Um, you know, being a dumb bitch, making keychains. Nobody likes onions.com slash store. Anyway, um, she's great. She's one of our smartest listeners, and we love her dearly. Oh God! Yeah, in the smoky shadows of the digital. What are your picks, vaping? Played a tune of deceit 
His podcast, A Seductive Symphony of Game Theory, drew in listeners like moths to a flame. Each episode was a rigged roulette wheel, spinning tales of chance and cunning. But behind the velvet voice and calculated charisma, Melton was orchestrating the ultimate grift, a high-stakes con that left his followers penniless and himself rolling in ill-gotten gains. The city may have been asleep, but Patrick's twisted games were just getting started. Yes! I'd like my show to be known for twisted games. You guys been seeing Patrick's oh, twisted games? Oh, Melty! There are many Newports laying on the floor, and my research shows they all love Swisher Sweets and have wispy beards. <laughs> Enough about my wispy beard. Where's Colt? Colt, get in here. Take it back. Take it back. It hurts. Wispy beard. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You wish. You wish I had a wispy beard. <laughs> Beloved Chatter said, J uh, Flat Cat Jessica has the personality of a bitch who makes keychains. You ain't wrong. I don't know. What if she's lovely? What if she's like a nice, nice lady? Um, all right, Vaping Dago, did we get any picks? Because um, vaping gets a pick. Um, C4 and A2. C4? You talking about like the, like the blow up stuff? C4 and A2. A2. That's a Chad. And C4. That's a snipe request. That's a snipe request, okay? We see a new square there. Snipe request. <laughs> Melton voice. She ain't. She ain't. Yeah, I noticed Kevin started doing that too. I like it. I repeating yourself is my new favorite. First of all, you know, you only have to do two hours when you repeat yourself. First of all, you only have to do two hours when you repeat yourself. <laughs> everything you do, everything you do could just be extended by two. Everything you do, everything you do can just be extended by... Okay, I got to knock it off. You get the point, though, right? It's it's one of my biggest uh, griffs is, is, only doing, is only doing half the time and hoping nobody notices it. Um, anyway, thank you, Vaping Dago. Uh, nice try. Hold on. And DK, did DK get his? Because DK gets two, two. Am I wrong or did he already fail? DK bought two for Jessica. That was the biggest waste of money of his life. And I think DK gets his own two. So two more squares, DK. And by the way, after five rounds of guessing, we're just going to we, we uh, refresh the whole board because you guys have had too much time to figure it out. Uh, feel the power, corn. That's how Ray does his shows. He repeats himself over and over and over. DK says, I've wasted more. I've had better. Uh, the real citizen then would roast Joe with Morse's dick. Yeah, what's going on with Carlos Danger? I guess he's like back. Carlos Danger's kind of like not been around for a while. Is he like, dude, I'm counting three dead pixels right now. We're never going to stop. I won't give up till they're all dead. And then the audio dies. Basically, this, this show is like the, the Voyager, <laughs> the Voyager satellite. We'll keep broadcasting as long as the equipment works. But the minute it all fails, this is over. And, uh. And that's just fine. Okay, so DK doesn't want to make a pick or what? DK is just typing about Opie and stuff. All right, well, I asked nine times for squares. I guess nobody wants. DK, you get a choice. Do you want to? Fo Everyone focus when you're giving money to me. We got, we got to take it up a notch. Giving money is not good enough anymore. I need focused giving. I need focused giving. You have to be constantly ready <laughs> to give more when i ask it of you dk says no pick no pick 
He's so rich, he can just skip it. Ah. And I'm fine with that. I mean, that's, look, that's like one of the most insane flex I've ever seen right there. Flexes. To, like, buy it, to win a prize, and to just be like, no thanks. Anyway, that's my point with uh, Shuli and Bob. I, I don't know what's going on, but I'll just tell you this. If I announced Onion Con and a month after announcing it, I had sold 10 tickets, we'd cancel it. It would be canceled. I'd, I'd already be like, oh, fuck. I've miscalculated. Because I, I know you can go like, well, this is two months out, Patrick. Who knows? I'm If this ends up, I mean, this has the potential. And he's got multiple of these gigs on the books. If if it leaks out that 22 people, you know, they don't have Perry this time. They don't have Kumia this time. That's Pottstown sold 300 tickets. They had Perry Caravello, who's bigger than all of them, and Kumia, who's bigger than all of them. So now, so now, so now they do the, they decide to do these shows that are just the BS show. It's literally Mike Morse, Bob, and Shuley. I mean, if it leaks out, if video comes out, if people start hearing, <laughs> uh, you know, if it's a, a Shuley, Bob, and Mike Morse stand up show, and there's 20 fans, 25 fans. Le if less fans come to this show, where is this at? Where's MS Theater? Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut? I don't even know where. If it turns out that Kevin gets more people to come out for Atlantic City in August, you know, that meetup we had where like 40 people came out to just watch Kevin go, what the fuck is this? If less people go to watch a performance of Shuli and Bob and Mike Morris than just came to hang out. It's in Pennsylvania. Bobby Fran moves more tickets, says Teamster Temp. Yeah, I, I, look, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying if if that happens. We already knew the Shuli fans were shut-ins. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just saying, you know. I don't know. I don't know where the energy goes. I don't know where the energy goes. Cause if, cause look, you know your numbers. If you're buying, if you're buying uh, listeners, and you're buying fans, I'd be worried about plugging the holes in the ship. Are you gonna spend energy booking shows and live events and stuff? It's like. Again, if this happens in February, and again, I'm not plugged into the Shuley Network. I don't know what's going on. Producer Joe used to talk to me. We don't talk. If it comes out that 20 or 30 people come to this, it's like Shuley's done. It'll never be. Like, if you thought Pottstown was laughed at, they'll they'll literally be, be laughing at, like, oh, he had a 10x reduction in ticket sales, an entire order of magnitude less. In ticket sales, when you cut out Perry Caravello and Kumia, and then what? And then and then you're gonna book more shows. Like what? You take this. This is gonna be a tour. It's gonna be a big. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. What I, I see what you're saying, DK, but there will never be a. Uh, we're not gonna do it during March Madness. NLO Con will be late May, early June. If we do do it, no formal announcements are being made yet. It takes a lot to uh, organize an event like this, but people who, who will be in on it that have already spoken to and vouched, I'd like to get Ray. I think Ray is a valuable addition just because you need someone. We beat him up less than uh, Kevin beat him up on Saturday. NLO beats him up less than that. We don't pretend to like him. Kevin, like, does the push-pull thing where he, like, pretends to like him. And then when, when he comes on, he just starts beating the shit. I mean, he Kevin beat the shit out of Ray Saturday night. It was great. It was great.
So I think we bring in Ray, not just solely to beat the shit out of, but, you know, you got to flavor it. You got to spice it up. Hello. You're fat. No. Yeah, you're fat. Says who? I'm going to die. Says who? Prove it. <laughs> Guys, is this true? Is this true? Have I been looking at this all wrong? Am I overweight? I went Saturday night. I went to uh, Adam Sandler here in Las Vegas. Look, I don't go. I I don't uh, go see a lot of comedians in their arena shows unless I'm invited. I'm backstage and I didn't pay, so buying a ticket to an Adam Sandler event, you know. Let's just say they were gifted. Anyway, uh, I go down there to Mandalay Bay Saturday night. Adam Sandler is performing. I don't know if you saw the 100% Fresh, the Adam Sandler story, the documentary on, on Netflix. But he's doing that, you know, where he's touring around, kind of doing the songs and the stand-up. So I get there, it's uh, 12,000 seats, I'd say there were probably 10,000 there, pay your money to fix your Lexus, how dare you, fat, no, obese, most definitely, this is getting mean, Patrick, have you been to the sphere yet, I am the sphere, I am the sphere, you should see how long it takes them to projection map my body. We get it. You're a man about town. Adam Sandler, LMAO, such cutty. Yeah, it was very mid. It was very mid. I will say that. The first half of it was okay. The end was like, it felt like unfinished and phoned in a little bit. He was kind of low energy. And the last two things that Adam Sandler did were literally... The same exact things that are on that 100% fresh thing. He played the Chris Farley song, which by now he's beat to death. He did it on SNL. He did it on that special. So, like, he ended on that Chris Farley song. And then he did the whole uh, Growing Old With You, where it plays, like, his whole, like, filmography reel and pictures of his wife. I gave you kisses on your chest when you go to sleep. I'll tuck you when you want. Make a peep. It's been really nice growing old with you. From Wedding Singer. You remember that Julia Gulia nonsense? Anyway, the same thing he did on that special on Netflix. And he like, he ends with those two songs and you're like, all right, so your last 15 minutes were already, your, were literally your closer from your last thing. And then it's like, you know, there's all these special guests there. Tim Meadows is there. And he comes out and does stand up. And by the way, Tim Meadows' stand up is dog shit. He's like, I shouldn't be watching an hour Adam Sandler show with 10,000 fans going, I've done a better hour than this. I, I've done a better hour of stand-up and gotten a better reaction than he's getting from these 10,000 people in these stands at this moment. And uh, Judd Apatow came out and opened for him, did some stand-up. It's like, again, you know, 40-year-old virgin, Pineapple Express, all that kind of stuff. It's fine. But stand-up? No thanks, Judd Apatow. He's literally doing that thing like, uh, you know, my balls are getting weird. I'm old. I had to go to a doctor and get a prostate exam, and he put his fingers up there. And I was like, what at a time, doc? It's just like the most, oh, yeah, 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 40-year-old open micer stuff. Wow, wow. Nobody's ever talked about how they don't like to wear pants around the house. That's crazy. I never really thought about it that way, Apatow. And then um, at one point, Sandler, like, brings out his daughter. 
or as I like to call her, Horse Teeth Sandler. And she sings a Taylor Swift song in earnest, no bit. Just, I'd like to bring my 18-year-old daughter out now to sing for you. She's really, really good. And then she comes out, and he plays guitar. Um, I, what, I don't even know the song. It was like, I had the best day with you today. I had the best day with you today. <laughs> Don't trash his kids. I'll put her on the wall. I'll put his young Sandlerish daughter on the wall. I don't know what this song was. Everyone had their dumb phones out. Swaying it back and forth. In earnest. Just daddy-daughter karaoke night in front of 10,000 people. He brings his daughter up. I had the best day with you today. She's singing. She's holding her stomach. She's so nervous. She's singing to 10,000 people. And we're all just sitting like, tell a joke. Tell a joke. Do something. You know, Adam Sandler's show sounds like it was fun for Adam Sandler. Yeah, at one point he's like, I, I, he's taking selfies with the crowd. And he has the camera hooked up. You know, so you can see on this big screen him taking selfies with the crowd the uh the like he was he was doing the thing where he like shines a flashlight on people in the crowd and like sings a song about them like this guy met her on tinder he's going home later tonight he'll be fucking himself because he owns a flashlight you know what i mean like just whatever he was doing shining the light on people and making it up and it was you know it's we're so woke he had to like preface it ad nauseum with this okay i'm gonna be shining the light on you and making up a song about you but it's not true but just go along with it like it's true don't get upset don't get offended don't get mad don't storm the stage don't yell don't sit down i'm gonna be singing stuff about you that's not true but you just just not within go along we're having fun it's i'm roasting you a little bit it's just fun it's just a nice time. It's just a joke. I don't mean it. He has to like do that like 30 times. Like just calling people fat or having a bad first date or whatever. And it was like, what the fuck? But he had to keep like going like, guys, I. <laughs> it, it was crazy. But between that and then like, and then getting in and out of that place is a night. It's why I never go anywhere. You never go, never go anywhere. That's what I say. So the Adam Sandler show, I would say pass. I would say wait for it on Netflix. I enjoy, I enjoyed the Netflix thing. You know, I like silliness. I, I like the Sandman. You know, I'm a, I, I could pop on QB Halloween while I jerk one out dry. But it was a little, it felt like a money grab. It felt like an unfinished show. Again, the first 20, 30 minutes were great. Had a lot of new stuff. And most of it, most of it was like, if you watch that 100% Fresh special he did on Netflix, it's like, um, there's nothing, dirt. not that I give a fuck about things being dirty, but when it's just dirty for dirty, 30 for 30. <laughs> There's like so much stuff about just fingering and dicks and pussy and ju it just like felt like ugh, what are you doing? And there was that thing in the in the hundred percent fresh special on Netflix where he talks about uh, taking a dick pic and there was a ghost in the room with the ruler. It's like that was like silly nonsense and it was like the only thing that had to do with a dick in the video. And and, and this whole special was just like dick this, dick that, pussy this. Fucking my wife, going down on me, giving head. It's like, uh, all right. All right. <laughs> um, They're all going to laugh at you. Yeah, I mean, it just like, oh, and then Kevin James was there. 
At one point, he's like, I think I saw someone out there in the crowd. Did I see someone? Get the camera out in the crowd. And then they, like, zoom in on this guy in the crowd in the seat, and it's Kevin James. And he stands up, and they, Kevin's like, I just miss you. I miss hanging out with you. You know, I just want to hang out with you, buddy. I just miss you. So then they start singing Endless Love to each other, like in uh, Happy Gilmore, as Kevin walks his way to the stage. And again, Kevin starts panicking and realizing he's not, he's supposed to be up on the stage at the end of the song when they go, my endless love. And he's not even like out of the aisle. So he has to like rush and hurry to get up there. You can tell it's like they only did a dry run through once. And then Kevin like plays the bongos while Adam plays a song. And then he grabs hammers and smashes the bongos into a million pieces and then walks off the stage. And then they brought that guy out. I don't even know his name. He's in every one of, uh, he's in every one of, um, Adam Sandler's movies. He's the like cross eyed guy. Like, uh, uh, uh. That guy, you know what I'm talking about? I don't even know his name. I don't even know how to, like, describe him. You know, the, there's those two guys who are in every one of Adam Sandler's movies. He's the, like, spiky-haired, short-haired guy who's not Rob Schneider. This isn't a guy whose name you know. He's the guy, he's the, uh, you, you know exactly who I'm talking about. The Adam Sandler guy. The Cajun. I don't know. Yeah, he was on the football team, I think, right? He was the guy who would, like, get hit on the football team. He's just like, ugh. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, it was Nudie Magazine Day, and we all had a great, great time. It was all right. It was very mediocre. I would have probably rather... I heard Chad tried to snipe... Uh, Kevin again Saturday? Like, what's this loser doing? Are we going to have to really start finding where he lives and beat the shit out of him? Uh... Hey, Dayla, I have received the money. A nice message you sent me on Saturday. Thanks, but now I have to yell at you. Sorry, not me at a wee. Sorry. Who's Dayla? He sent me money Saturday? I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I will say Mari, Mario Movie Star Fingernails has purchased my old iMac. This is a guy who's per and and um and already paid for already sent a fifty percent deposit, which is non refundable. So if you change your mind, I keep it. And I get to sell it to uh the next highest bidder. Was Nick Swartz in there? Nope. No Rob Schneider, no Nick Swartzen, but Adam Sandler's daughter was there. If you like that kind of shit. I had the best day with you today. You guys want to hear my little girl sing? No, no. <laughs> I had the best day with you today. And Netflix was there filming. So I'm sure this will be coming out on on another special. But, I, I, you know, when people pay $300 for an Adam Sandler ticket, I didn't. Again, gift. But people pay that kind of money to go see Adam Sandler. It's like, how about you don't sing songs from your last special to close? How about you don't bring your daughter out to fill eight minutes of Drum diggly dum dum. I mean, no one cares about your girl. Why don't you bring in a video of her at a recital when she was seven? My girl's been practice, practicing a song. I'm going to bring her out here. And then everyone was so, you know, everyone just kind of like went along with it. When I, what I would like is uh, the old Adam Sandler fans to be like, boo, boo. But what do I know? I don't know how to put on an arena show, I guess. Until I get a daughter who can go up on stage and just uh, 
belt out some plain white tees garb. You know, what are we doing? <laughs> Guys, my daughter's been working really hard on a little ditty. My daughter's been working real hard on a little song. I had the best day with you today. By the way, is that one of Ta Taylor Swift's uh, known bangers? I had the best day with you today. Ugh. Anyway, back to Brad Thacker, because I see him getting ramped up. We're doing the Thackering, everybody. We're doing the Thackering. Hit the like button. We could get to 200 in the next few minutes. Then we want I won't have to get a job slinging shell gas. The Thackering. I had the best day with you today. Here's a little ditty about Jack and Diane. Yeah, who else was there? I'm trying to think who else was there. They had some other young nobody comic who didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Apparently he was from Netflix's. You are so not invited to my bar bat mitzvah. I don't even know what that is. I imagine just another one of Adam Sandler's productions. You are so not invited to my bat mitzvah. <laughs> so I'm sure that stings. Anyway, that guy had no idea what he was doing. You can tell people who have never like done comedy in a big venue because they're not they don't have the timing down right. Like the acoustics and the echo. Like you tell a joke, it takes a, a couple more beats for it to get back to you from the audience. And he didn't have that like not not again, you don't even have to have the the timing down, but like the ability to to adjust and uh work into that timings work into that timing he didn't he didn't uh get it but it didn't matter by the time the daughter came out and it was the best day we had today Ugh. oh and then can i tell you something about the Michelob ultra arena <laughs> okay so this took place in the Michelob ultra arena and this will be my last thing and we'll get to brad thacker and his uh revenge Hit the like button. The Michelob Light, or sorry, the Michelob Ultra Arena is where the WNBA, the 2022 champion WNBA, what's our team called? The Sparkling Aces or something. What are they called? The Las Vegas Golden Aces? I think they're the Aces. I, I don't know. The WN, our, our WNBA team. I bet they've never had that arena full before. And I'm going in there and I and I and I have floor seats, okay? Not to brag. But I'm going down, you walk in, you know, you walk through the tunnel. You walk all the way down the steps to get to the floor, and then they have someone there like not letting people on the floor unless your tickets are for the floor. I have a a 32 ounce souvenir WNBA Aces Diet Coke that I've gotten myself for the show. It's in a 32 ounce plastic collectible cup that cost me nine dollars, <laughs> and it's got a straw and a lid. And I'm a happy boy. I'm going down to the floor to watch my thing. I, they stop me at the thing. This this black woman with dreadlocks comes up to me at the bottom before I get down on the floor. She says, she goes, you have to empty that in a, a plastic cup. And she hands me a clear, you know, 16 ounce or 20 ounce, whatever they are, like a solo cup, but it's clear. She hands me that. Now, this will not hold my drink. And also, it's already in a plastic cup. It's already, so I'm going, oh, it's in a plastic cup with a lid. I'm good. And she's like, no, the policy is you have to put it in this. And I go, I, I go, oh, you must be. I mean, I'm thinking like, no, they're not letting beer bottles down there. They're not letting cans on the floor. You know, they don't want people throwing stuff. Okay. 
no, no. She goes, no, you got to put it in. It's not my rules. You got to put it in this. And then I go, this drink won't fit into this cup. So she hands me two. Now, I, you know, I mean, this is so, so stupid. Now, I'm, I, I have two plastic empty cups in my hand, like solo cups. And then I have this 32 ounce. And I go, I go, why would you have to take it from this plastic cup and put it in these two plastic cups? These, these ones don't have lids. They don't have a straw. This is a lid and a straw. And she literally says to me, I'm not kidding you. This shit drives me nuts. She says to me, it's, it's so it doesn't spill. And I said, this cup has a lid and a straw. These don't have any lid and I have to carry two of them filled to the brim. She goes, I don't make the rules. And I go, right, but you agree this is plastic and this was less likely to spill because it has a lid. And so I, I'm holding these cups. And I'm like, so I have to get the lid off this one while I hold two other cups. I'm standing. And I start pouring it into one of the plastic cups and that plastic cup falls, hits the, hits the stairs, and splashes all over everybody like a half a solo cup of Diet Coke. Most of it hits her. And then I go, at least we're getting it in a cup so it doesn't spill. And I just, and then at that point, I like dropped the other cup and just kept walking. And then another woman stopped me and she goes, you have to put that in plastic cups. I go, yeah, we tried that. It doesn't make sense. So I, I don't understand why I have to move it from one plastic cup with, with a lid to a plastic cup without a lid. And she goes, if you'd like to put it in uh, plastic cups, she points to a table with plastic cups. She goes, if you'd like to put it in plastic cups, uh, you can do it right over here. And I go, oh, because the way she phrased it, if you'd like to. I'm such an asshole. The way she phrases it, she goes, if you'd like to put it in. And I go, oh, okay, never mind. I don't, I don't want to. And she goes, she goes, sir, the rules are the rules. And I go, okay. And she goes, if you'd like to put it in a plastic cup, you can do it over here. And I go, oh, I, I heard you. I, I wouldn't like to. I don't want I don't want to do that. And she goes, if you'd like to put it in a plastic cup. And I go, I don't want I don't like I don't want to do that. And she goes, I'm going to have somebody come. She says this to me. I'm where are you seated. I'm going to have somebody come talk to you. And then I go to my seat. I sit down. Nobody ever comes to talk to me. I wait till the lights go out and I have to sip my illicit cola. What are they doing at these venues? I hate everyone. I know this doesn't matter. I know it's an inconsequential moment in my life. It's gone forever. It'll never come up again. I'll never go back to that place. But what is going on? I watched people. I'm not shitting you. They were making people with Aquafina bottles of water. It's a Pepsi venue. They were making people with Aquafina bottles of water come down to the floor and empty that. It didn't fit into one cup. So they had to pour it into two clear cups to carry their water and the whole fucking thing is so it doesn't spill it was in a water bottle with a lid i I, like they're fucking retarded first of all like what are we doing with the plastic like just more plastic more plastic more plastic second of all you have to empty water bottles out Melton doesn't play well with others. It's the new North. Shut up. I'm getting fl- I get I'm getting flummoxed. I don't like I don't like inefficiency and I don't like stupid rules for the sake of stupid fucking rules. That's what I don't like. It, this was the most retarded thing I'd ever seen. They were serving cocktails and those giant flutes like they do in Vegas, the big frozen drinks. They were serving drinks in mock um like plastic mason jars for the aesthetic of a mason jar, but plastic. And then, but as soon as you got down to the floor, you had to know whatever your drink was in, which was all plastic. This venue didn't have any glass. They didn't even have aluminum. They didn't even have cans. Everyone had to, no matter what plastic vessel your drink was in, you had to transfer it to a worse plastic vessel. It's like, hey, and, and and I don't even mind them doing that. Just go, we're retarded. This is how we do it. Fine. Don't do it under the guise 
of this is so it doesn't spill. When every other container we're transferring it from has a better containment system than nothing at all. I don't mind you having dumb rules. Just admit they're dumb. We're dumb. Somebody's fucking a plastic cup lady in corporate. So we bought all these plastic cups and we don't know what to do with them. Yeah, every time she calls my boss, she shows her tits and sends him nudes. So he keeps buying plastic cups. So we have to get rid of these plastic cups. So everyone has to use these plastic cups. That's fine. I would go, wow, your do- your boss sounds like a horn dog. I get it. I get it. I get it. No, just for no reason we're using these plastic cups. It's like when it's like when I was in a hotel in 2021 in New York City in Midtown and I go to get ice. You know, I take my ice bucket from my room. I walk down the hall. I go to get ice. And the ice machine says, the ice machines are off on every floor. You have to go down to the basement to get ice. We have one ice machine on. It's down in the basement. And then, and the, the which would be fine. If, if that was the end of it, it'd be fine. Okay. This hotel doesn't run the ice machine on every floor. They're trying to save money. I got to go down to the basement and get ice. Great. But on the paper, what it says is, to help prevent the spread of COVID, Everyone has to go down to the basement to get ice. Well, now you're dumb. Now you're dumb. So now instead of just walking down the hall to get ice, I have to get on an elevator, press buttons, go down to a communal ice reservoir where everyone in the hotel is coming to get ice out of one bucket, and you're trying to convince me that it's because you don't want COVID to spread. So to prevent the spread of COVID, everyone get on an elevator, go to the same location, and stick your hands into the same jar of ice and get it. Just say you're broke. Just say, just say (laughs) you're trying to save money. Times are tough. I mean, if you wanted to spread ice, that's how you would do it. If you wanted to spread COVID, (laughs) that's how you would do it. Hey, we've dumped all the germs into one place. Come on down. Form a line. Everyone get close. It was like in the basement of the hotel. If you know New York, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, a normal floor. You go down and it's corridors and hallways and, you know, furnace pipes. It's just shit. It's just shit. So I, I've had enough. I, I've had enough of the world and I won't be participating anymore. Hit the like button. I'll change the subject if we get to 200 likes. Until then, I'm bitching about ice. Another thing who's making the little discs? You know, do we need that? It's almost annoying as the as the nugget. Talking to you, Sonic. Nobody wants a cherry limeade. Nobody. <laughs> the Thackering. This is one of one of many things gonna be coming out very, very soon about uh about Chad. And you can goddamn bet. It's going to be hilarious. It's all going to be about catching Chad in lies. So Chad steals these shoes, lists them on eBay, because, again, he thinks you're dumb. You'll never catch him stealing shoes. And then Chad says, Trevor Huffman and I are great. I just talked to him three weeks ago. He's living in the Carolinas. I had him on with Kevin during COVID, and he was great. Telling Antonio Gates stories. (laughs) Well, Brad runs over and talks to Trevor Huffman, I guess. And we try to get to the bottom of this. Brad messages Trevor Huffman and says, I know this is weird, but Chad Zumach has been stalking myself and a few other comedians for years. Now, I don't know if this is true. It seems more like Brad Track, Brad, Brad Trackman. Wow. Another loser. Uh, Brad Thacker, who I don't know, and maybe a loser. (laughs) Uh, Brad Thacker is definitely the one stalking Chad, and I'm here for it. I like it. He's now claiming you guys are friends, and he just talked to you three weeks ago. He tends to lie and name drop a lot. (laughs) Yeah, Trevor Huffman. I name drop Trevor Huffman everywhere I go. Just wondering if this is actually true or not. Thanks. And Trevor Huffman write, writes back, like, talked on the phone? No. 
but we text occasionally or Facebook chat. Nothing more. Remember, Chad, this, uh, this is like Chad with Godfrey and Florentine, too. It's like, you know, these guys, Godfrey wouldn't save Chad from a burning building. Godfrey, like, doesn't like Chad. I can almost guarantee it. Don't trust any of these Cleveland people, Pat. I don't. I don't. I just report. So, Brad Thacker sends Chad's mugshot from when he stole 77 credit cards uh, to Trevor and says, just be careful. He threatens people a lot and has a lengthy criminal history, including a recent arrest for felony credit card theft. He stole a card from a 77-year-old war veteran and was caught. Thanks for taking the time to confirm a few things. Now, this is understating it severely. I mean, this guy's a fucking nightmare. And then Trevor says, yeah, he's burned a lot of bridges. Wow, that's crazy. Didn't know it was that bad. Now, this is great because, first of all, Brad Thacker is just spreading the word to everybody Chad grew up with and Chad's a giant piece of shit. You know, these guys don't really keep up with Chad. Nobody gives a fuck about Chad. Chad's a has-been. But he's all these people that Chad claims to be in touch with and friends with. uh, He, uh, you know, (laughs) Brad Thacker is making it his business to go around and and inform everyone about what a fucking mess Chad is. And I'm here for it. How did Chad get a hold of 77 credit cards? He from a gym. He just walked into the locker room and stole them from lockers. Fact. Yeah, I'm sure you all guessed it. I got no dick this weekend. The Vikings didn't play. And oh, well, putting prick Aaron can't get hard and fuck unless it's men wearing purple tights, throwing a ball down the field. Oh, shut the fuck up, April. Maybe the reason is that your pussy smells like decomposition and seawater. I mean, it's like going down on Natalie Holloway. Now go shoot us some breakfast. Go shoot us some breakfast. Yo, hunting ass, scrapping ass, bitch. Hit the like button. There it is. Staring you in the face. A thumbs up icon. It's hollow. It's dark. Click it. Make it bright. The endorphins that will race through your body are of epic proportions. Consider this your good deed for the day. I won't. I have to go change my litter box, or perhaps I'll leave it another day. Ugh, Mersh. We do have some Mersh stuff to, uh, to, to catch up on. This nightlife radio channel puts up the funniest little segments of Mer- because I've tried to watch like a Mer show to do like a making fun of watch, but it's you know it's so boring. It's just usually him going on and on about his cats and stuff. Unless it's like embarrassing, it's not even good. He talks like political and uh, just like. Again, have a political segment by all means, but every day you're going on and on about Owen Benjamin or like, we get it, we get it. Chad Chad deserves what he gets, but Brad is being a straight up bitch. Uh, If it comes up, it is what it is, but seeking people out and piling all of this shit on is a joke. I think it's more indicative of like how Chad's treated people. We're going to get this guy on Joe, Joe, uh, (laughs) Joe, Joe Dirt. I don't know what his name is. We're going to get this guy, Joe, on who worked with him, and he's got stories, and he's got truths, and um, apparently Chad's afraid. Chad's like, Chad doesn't want this Joe guy talking. I don't know what Joe has to say, but we're setting it up. We're going to get it get it aired out. I, I'd love to get Brad Thacker and this Joe guy on. Maybe we can get all of us on. Just... Uh, just to get to the bottom, maybe we do a special, a very special in LA where we go into StreamYard, send everybody the link, and get to the bottom of this, huh? Do me a favor, 462 of you, would you please hit the like button? I mean, what's what's it going to take? What's it going to take? I got Justin Kempel on it. I got Fearless on it. You know, maybe they're not doing a good job. Kempel, you dropped in the ball. Dropped in the ball. 
Fearless, you dropping the ball. Get your mind off of single Stevie Lou and focus. You should have Opie on. I mean, I really like Opie caught me by surprise this morning. I don't really uh, know too much about Opie. He started this thing, I guess, on uh, MLC Friday or Thursday, whenever that happened with Opie. He goes, um, Opie's like, who's Melton? It's like, Opie, we've exchanged a million, not a million, but we've exchanged several DMs. You messaged me like, were you in my chat today? You know, I I don't know. But it's insane to be like, you don't know who Melton is. You don't know who nobody likes onions is. You've messaged me. You sought me out. I didn't go find you and message you. I'm not, look, I'm an Opie and Anthony fan, but I'm not an Opie fan. You know, Opie, like, Luis J. Gomez, like, demolished Opie on that clip. Like, it is just a fact. Like, Opie is a known insult. When you call somebody Opie, it means you're a bore, a comedy killer. You're literally, like, the opposite of what funny is. That's what Opie means. He, I mean, he, he was dead right what Luis J. Gomez said. He said, you know... He, you made a you made something a decade ago that a lot of people loved, and you, and since then you've done nothing. And not only nothing, it would have been one thing if Opie went away and said thank you for an amazing twenty years. Uh, it's been awesome. I'm gonna take a break and gone away. But no, you did what you did what Kumia did. You thought you thought that you were going to do what Kumia did and it would just be easy. But then you realized you have, like, he, he really doesn't have anything. I've got a, I've got a little show on here. Search the channel for my little thing about Opie earlier this year. But it's like, I mean, dude, we've all watched you for 10 years try to put something together. It's, it's literally like Josh Denny. It's like, shut up. Shut up. We've watched you, like, we've fucking head in our hands watched sad and depressed as you've taken two sticks for a decade and tried to rub them together and cobble something of substance out of your brain that would that would attract any sort of audience it's just not happening opie you've you've not only failed to continue your legacy after reaching such lofty heights as a broadcaster you've not only done that what you've done is completely undo it all you're a, i mean you are a joke you go live he was live this morning there's 60 people watching and he was like we got a big audience this morning and a lot of people don't worry a lot of these guys will leave soon they're just here from the devil versus the troll we'll get back down to our normal 18 sooner it's like holy shit Shuli is a complete OP. I was thinking Chad. I was like, because he was sitting on his beach and he was like, yeah, right. Like, I'm not successful. Look at this. It's like, again, who would want to switch places with OP? I guess if you're poor and have nothing. But, like, OP seems like a miserable fuck. Same as Kevin, but at least Kevin knows it. You know, Kevin can't stop hiding from his family and doing shows. At least he's very aware of that. Opie's out on the beach constantly trying to get away from his family on a Friday night, yet telling you how great it's going and how successful he is. No one would switch places. Why? To be a millionaire? To live in the Hamptons? Who wants the traffic? It's like Stuttering John. I, I don't care if Stuttering John had $5 million in the bank. He don't. But I don't care if he does. Who amongst us wants to trade places? Jeru says, Pat was saying eight months ago, you guys are going to leave. I don't care. Jeru's dumb. <laughs> Jeru's dumb. I told the people who were here for, for that that it wouldn't always be that and that they would beat it. <laughs> and I don't. I don't. I didn't come. There's a big difference between coming on. He came on this morning, you fucking idiot. Get the difference. He came on this morning and started going, we've got a big audience today. People are tuning in because that shut up. <laughs> it's not the same thing at all. I, I, I really can't. I really got to quit. I've got to quit. 
It's too. I can't. It's too much work to explain everything to dumb people. Cool cat. Daddy Derek's got a message. New Cool Cat video is coming out very, very soon. He wants you to know about it. Oh, no. Why is he quiet? Is it muted? Are we muted? Should I not have muted that? Watch this. One minute teaser. Hey, guys. What's happening? Got some great news here. The first thing I want to say when this starts is that Derek seems like he's in a tiny apartment, and by the echo, it seems like there's no furniture. I mean, this sounds like Chad's place. This sounds like Chad's house. You hear the echoing? Where did his home go? Why is he in this empty apartment with a bicycle leaned up against the wall and an echo like there's no furniture in here? The Cool Cat versus Dirty Dog, The Virus Wars feature film. So he's renamed it again to Cool Cat versus Dirty Dog, The Virus Wars. Now, remember, he got this idea during the pandemic, and it's now 2024, and he's putting it out. So a real timely thing, um, you know, a real, real timely thing to put out. People are going to be clamoring for this feature film, <laughs> The Virus Wars. Now, remember, he takes a shotgun out to the desert and is shooting coronavirus balls in the desert. That's what this movie is. Will be completed this weekend, and it is just so sweet. I'm so happy for it. I'm so excited for you guys to see it. As I stated before, you've never seen nothing like this. Okay, hey, if you want your name in the movie, go to CoolCatLovesYou.com. I still got a few associate producer um, and executive producer spaces. We just had an executive producer come in. Executive, executive, executive. <laughs> last night, so I only got two more sets of props. So if you're interested in those, hey, you got to jump on the bandwagon now. Guys, get ready to rock and roll with this new cool cat. I just realized they all these guys, Mersh, Chad, and and Derek, they all have four first of all, these teeth. These teeth. What's going on with that? Look at that one. I mean, gangly. Can we even, like, I don't want to even know what's going on in between the top ones. Like that black, dark, this, and this, and then this little middle bottom two. I don't even know if you're supposed to have, I don't know if teeth are supposed to be, uh, you're supposed to have a middle tooth. Last time I checked, you have 32 teeth. They should be evenly divided on tops, on tops and bottoms, and symmetrical sides of the of the mouth. The bottom ones are just growing like bamboo shoots, and the top ones, I, the black, the black. What is that? Cat feature film. Ooh. Hey. Wow! There it is. There it is. Holy shit. I mean, holy shit. You got a little something right here. You got a little something. If my teeth, I, you know, I don't have perfect teeth, but goddamn close. If I ever, look, they're symmetrical. They're supposed to be, mm, Zoom in. Zoom. Ah, I just. <laughs> there goes my breakfast. Does Cool Cat have a crack problem? You know, I mean, people talk about not having insurance. It's like, hello. And, and cigarettes don't do this. Cigarettes don't make your tooth. I don't know. Hey, take it easy. Bye-bye now. And then, um, oh, December 9th, we're getting a world virtual premiere. I wasn't aware of that. And then he put up this video where they have, like, the credits. If you want to see your name in the movie, you can see the credits. 
Hey guys, what's happening? Hey, I tell you what, if you love cool I tell you what. You can tell he's like a real movie producer cuz of the green screen and the cameras. Don't mind all this stuff. We were just making a movie. <laughs> it's got that kind of a vibe. What? This? This is just equipment we use to make movies. Cool cat, then ooh, you are just ooh. Going to love the nice some little video. Hey guys, we got one scene left to shoot. It's just one in one third page. Film it tomorrow. Got all my equipment out, or a lot of my equipment out already. The whole this isn't all of it. I have so much equipment. This is so little of my equipment. Whole apartment just looks like a little movie studio right here. And um, this looks like a little movie studio right here, doesn't it? Doesn't this look like a little movie studio? This film. You've never heard me say this in all the time I've been around. If you guys have been a lot of you follow me for a lot of years, been around a lot of years now, you've never heard me. I promise you, you have never seen a film like our brand new one, and that is Cool Cat. I'm I'm not only guaranteed you've seen a film like it. I'm I think 68% of the footage will be the exact same, the exact same footage we've already seen. Versus Dirty Dog. The virus wars. I mean, it is just, I mean, I'm sitting there editing and, you know, and I'm just editing. laughing. It is just fun. <laughs> I mean, it, I was editing it and I was laughing and laughing. I mean, it is just fun. It is just fun. Do you guys like fun? And, um, okay, guys. At the, right, right after this, I'm going to show you the clip. I mean, on, on the credits that we have, the credit runs, the end credits, and everything. Fuck you yeah. got a chance to get your name in it. So if you want to add your name in it, you just have a couple weeks to make this happen. Go to my website, and that is CoolCatLovesYou.com. It costs you 25 bucks to get your name in it, and um, you don't even get to flip over any squares. Um, so you can join this fabulous crowd that we got coming up. I'm about to show you here. Hey, I got a couple other things to, um. Hi, would y'all like a gun? <laughs> on one of the music videos, I can put it in there where I got a couple kids waving a cool cat. It's cool cat's new, take a picture. I'll put a little bit out there on the next video or the one right after it, you know, so I can put a couple kids in there like waving at cool cat. So you get your own face in there and everything in the actual music video. And, um, um, I thought that would be pretty fun. If, if you've got a kid and you want them in my video, send them over to my house, just send them over. I probably haven't been doing Coke that day. Hey, I'll tell you what, we got another theme. <laughs> You want to be an associate producer on the credit? I mean, in, in, in the credits and, and on a film that's really got some potential, here's your chance. A film that really has some potential. I'm not kidding. He 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 edits all this on like a 2008 iMac. You know, not a nice iMac, like the one I sold the Mario movie star fingernail. It's right here. Go over there and you get a nice package, you know, and all that. And I'm not doing no Kickstarter crap or nothing like that. It's on my website. By the way, I think... Keith and the Girls Kickstarter ends this week. They're going to do it. They're going to hit their 25 grand. Unreal. Only a couple of things. Oh, and the reason why it's only a couple of weeks, we're setting up our worldwide virtual premiere for December the 9th. Yes, sir, read tickets are going to be five bucks each. I think that's a great price to watch. What's December 9th? Today's the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. So that's Saturday night. Saturday night um, premiere. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll buy a ticket and we'll watch the virtual premiere of Cool Cat with six other super fans. That's Saturday night, this coming Saturday. Okay. Okay. Two bombings this week. Pearl Harbor and this. Got it. Got it. Watch just a film that... I promise you, you ain't never we talk about December 7, 1941. Seen nothing like this one. I mean, this thing is just fun. <laughs> oh, cool can dirty dog on. I mean, <laughs> okay. Um, that's a little too much left. First of all, this face. <laughs> Fuck. This is a guy at the end of his rope.
This is a guy who's got nothing going on. And he's like, hey, I just thought of a new thing. What if you give me $50 and I put your kid in a rap video for a song I just made? None of them have effort, you know? He'll always be like, hi. Hey, hi, hey, I needed money, so I wrote a new Cool Cat song, and your daughter can be in the video. We only have, like, 18 daughter spots. So hurry up. Hey, hey, hurry up. Yo, 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 my name is Cool Cat, and this is the Daughters song. I'm hanging with daughters, and my daughters be dancing. This is a Daughters song. Cool Cool Cat is a cool cool cat, and daughters are acting like daughters. They're not sons. They're better than daughters, and this is the Daughters song. Yeah, so if you want your daughter dancing to that, it'll be $65, plus they got to buy their own uniform. <laughs> it's like, okay. Fun. <laughs> oh, cool can dirty dog on. I, mean, <laughs> I just I, I can't with the la with that laugh. Love writing that character. He's so much fun. And um I love writing that character. All right, easy. Easy. Hemingway, you're not writing anything. I uh, when I came up with that character, who knew it would be such a hoot to write? I love writing that character. And it's just fun. <laughs> Oh, cool can dirty dog on. I, mean, <laughs> I just I love writing that character. He's so much fun. I, mean, <laughs> I just I love writing that character. He's so much fun. And um <laughs> I just I love writing that character. He's so much fun. I, mean, <laughs> I just I love writing that character. He's so much fun. And um and then we also have... <laughs> and he just shifts. It's like he did in the 420 Awards. He just shifts mood so fast. <laughs> I love writing that character. It's so much fun. And another thing we have for y'all available. It's like the mood just... He really, you know, constantly, constantly, constantly. Kevin Nealon has fallen so far, I guess. I mean, he just goes from manic to serious. Oh, cool can dirty dog on. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> I just, I love writing that character. He's so much fun. And, um, and then we also have executive producer credits. Producer. A, a, executive producer. Now that right there is if you want to be a big boy. Now with the. If you want to be. A big boy. Ah. Executive producer credit. You're going to get your own billboard on the billboard. The front credits, which means a, a, a thing, a credit with just your name on it, right? A thing. A, 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 They're executive producer. You. <gasps> right there. And of course, at the end. You get your credit there too. Bam. Now, also with the executive producer credits, I'm doing something that I've never done before. And I mean, it, it costs a lot of money to make these movies. So I'm trying to get a little bit of money back here. So I'm going to offer some things that I, I really don't want to part with. But hey, if you, um, if you like props. I love props. I'm glad you brought it up. I'm like, I don't, you know, it's hard to say, but I'm probably like, the number one prop fan. When you start talking about movie props, I'm like, hello, props. Hello, props. He's like, I got a lot of stuff I really don't want to part with. This is this is Michael Ray Bauer vibes. I wasn't going to let this go, but for $40. You know, they'll do that thing like, too, like, uh, Remember, like all the uh, the all the time life collectible bullshit. Like, uh, recently the U.S. Mint discovered a trove of a thousand seven hundred coins, limited edition, printed. You can have one for nineteen ninety nine. It's like <laughs> the U.S. Mint discovered an unknown treasure. There's only 1,700 pieces of it. It's pure gold. And because I'm watching a slop chip, uh, you know, slop chop, slap chop, 
Infomercial at 2 a.m. I can own one? From the people who brought me the Franklin Mint commemorative, you know, like, it's just like, oh, yeah, this thing's super rare. There aren't many of them, but it's $19, and you can get your hands on. I tell you what, you come in on the executive producer, I got three sets of props. The first one's in, first come, first serve. You get to choose your one. Now, from this movie. He said, I don't want to let this stuff go. That's how he opened up this segment. You're going to get a prop. Slop chop, slop chop. You're, I don't want to let this stuff go. I really don't want to let this stuff go, but I will. But I will. The biggest prop is the coronavirus ball. This is the biggest prop. The biggest prop. The best prop. The coronavirus ball. Watch him, watch him hypnotize you with it. Now, from this movie, the biggest prop is the coronavirus ball. I only have one of these, period. All those coronavirus ball green screen shit he made with this ornament. And this is the one in the movie right here. We all know that professional movies only have one of everything. They never have a backup. From wardrobe to, you know, principal props. They only always have one. It can be yours if you want to be an executive producer. Now the I bet that's still available. I bet. Vaping Dago? I can promise you I will not send it back to him. Get me an executive producer credit. And get me that ball. Second one, I think it's pretty darn cool here. Now, this is going to be... I didn't want to get rid of this stuff. I really wanted to keep this forever. But I'll, uh, I was going to pass this on to my boy. <laughs> I was going to give this to my children's children. This is the actual coronavirus ball. Pretty popular in the movie. Now, this is... Dirty dogs, poison. <laughs> I got that. Thing. And this is the one in the movie. Ah, he's yelling and, and the put the pores but the, the dirty dog balls are flying out. I mean, wait you see the special effects. Wait till you see the special effects. The Vero Hold on, he said this is dirty dog's poison, but the coronavirus balls are coming out of it. He like it's so confused. Like, is it poison or a virus? <laughs> going to be pretty popular in the movie now this is dirty dogs poison <laughs> i mean this is the one in the movie ah, he's yelling and, and the put the pores but the, the dirty dog balls are flying out i mean when you see the special effect the dirty dog balls are flying out of it Woo! Woo! wait till you see the special effect <laughs> wait till you See the special effects. And I did the special effects on those too. Hey, and I did them myself. So you, my so you know they're low rent. I did them on my old Mac. I did them on my L. Woods iBook. Pink and purple edition. I never really did that before, so I, I, it turned out pretty cool to all. I'm real happy with it. But um, um, you get the dirty dog, you get the orange death. Oh, no. 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 Bottle two that was on the desk. That's when Dirty Dog's making his thing. He, 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 the last ingredient was this, and then the Dirty Dog spit. And that's when all the evil started coming out of the, the poison bottle. Oh, no. Definitely no for me, dog. <laughs> uh, what? What? He's so into it. For so I, I, it turned out pretty cool to all. I'm real happy with it. But um, you get the dirty dog. You get the orange death. Now 
What my favorite part is when he explains to you what the orange death is. Because he really knows. Listen to the detail and specificity with which he describes the scene of the movie the orange death is used in. What happens with the orange death, Derek? A spot or two that was on the desk. That's when Dirty Dog's making his thing. He, 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 he. The last ingredient was this, and then the Dirty Dog spit. And that's when all the evil started coming out of the, the poison bottle. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. And, 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 and you also get this in the movie where Dirty Dog is... You know, make Reminder, there is a Der uh, Derek Savage AI voice. <laughs> you know, to make the first virus ball, this is it. Also, there's only one of each. So that Every prop in his movie only has one of each. One of each. That's all you got. I got three. That's it. And then for the third, you'll see in the movie that Cool Cat gets a very special necklace. It was his granddaddy cat's necklace. You what the fuck? No, Cool Cat always loved his granddaddy cat. Cool Cat always loved his granddaddy cat. And his granddaddy cat left him the magical Cool Cat power necklace. <laughs> this movie is going to be just as disjointed as the gun self-defense for women video. For those of you who don't know, we've been watching this gun self-defense for women video of his on our member stream. They He runs around with Cool Cat uh, painting, uh, demolishing houses, flipping houses. There's very little to do with gun safety in the video at all. And it gives Cool Cat special powers, and he needs that special power. Hold on, what is the, it? The magical Cool Cat power necklace and it gives cool cat special powers and he needs that special power if he's going to defeat dirty dog and save you you and your family from the dirty dog virus so uh, originally this movie was like cool cat versus dirty dog then the pandemic happened it was dirty dog versus pandemic uh the coronavirus and it was like dirty dog a cool cat saves the children from coronavirus. Now it's the virus wars. Now it's a dirty dog virus. I mean, this is all over the place. But but it's also poison. So you better you better hope you better pray that cool cat's got the strength to take him down, or you might die soon. What the fuck? <laughs> like what the actual shit? Family from the dirty dog virus. So you better, you better hope, you better pray that Cool Cat's got the strength to take him down, or you might die soon. <laughs> is this for kid? Is this the official trailer? You better have faith in Cool Cat, and also in this film. Don't you forget, we got the Harrier Jet in here, baby doll, my good friend, Mister Lieutenant Colonel R. Is the only privately owned Harrier Jet in existence. We know. We know. So again, like he has a friend with a Harrier jet or a guy he just harassed at an air show. He went to an air show. He's filmed, you know, footage on his cell phone of a Harrier jet taking on and off. There's nothing to do with Cool Cat in it or anything, but he just puts that footage in and goes like, Cool Cat's in that jet going to save the day. It's so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. Mark Knowles and his Harrier jet, the world's only this is billion Harry. This is the footage from the movie. Like, they're just putting in this clip of a Harrier jet for no reason, because he can. He literally is a guy who like has a bunch of clips and he, then he cobbles it together and tries to form a narrative for the movie. There's no script. Knowles and his Harrier jet, the world's only civilian Harrier jet, is in the film. Teaming with, teaming with Cool Cat. So guys, hey. That's it. It's at an air show. He just takes a, a picture of a jet taking off. Cool Cat's not in it. It's not. It's so dumb. All I got to say to you, December the 9th, you can, um, I'm putting everything together now. 
We'll be pre-selling tickets on the website. So, you know, give me a few days at five bucks each, and it's five bucks of pure entertainment, baby doll. Yeah, December baby. the 9th, the worldwide virtual premiere. We're, we're watching of, this. Saturday night, we got to watch this. Cool Cat versus Dirty Dog, the virus wars. God bless, guys. Now, it's not, we got three more minutes, so I don't know why he's signing off. Enjoy the movie. Bye-bye. This is the end credits. This song has been around for 20 years. I mean, they put, he, this song is in every movie. Yo, 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 I'm the coolest cat because I'm a cool, cool cat and the cool man cat. Hip, 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 the hop, hop, hop. I got a story to tell you about the coolest cat. His name is Cool Cat and the kids love him so. So you better watch out because he's an anti-bullying hero. He's the pretty good rhyme, pretty smooth rhyme. Rap master and everyone knows it's true. So you better not forget so you're cool too. So if you want to rap and be real cool, then think of Cool Cat and the rhymes will come to you. Think of, if you want to be cool and be cool too, just think of Cool Cat and the rhymes will, they will come to you. So, so you better not forget, so you're cool too. So if you want to rap and be real cool, then think of Cool Cat and the rhymes will come to you. Some rappers talk about crime and violence, but the real OGs preach that peace is power. Some rappers talk about crime and violence, but the real OGs talk about how peace is power. What? I bet ask what makes Cool Cat the rap master. Then they hear his rhymes and they know the answer. So if you're not cool but want to be, then find Cool Cat so he can be a reality. There ain't no hate and all is great because Cool Cat is, cool Cat is a hero. I rap this beat to make you better because in this crazy world we all need to come together. So you be cool and listen closely to the rhymes and beats of the true rap master. This song sounds so... I just picture him standing by his microwave with the cell phone going, like, and I'm the true rap master. My, my popcorn's almost done and the microwave's about to go ding, so I better wrap up this rap and get on with this thing. The movie's coming out soon. It's going to be good, so you should look for Cool Cat hanging out in your neighborhood. My name is Eric Derrick, and I got, I got bars. Hippity hip hip hop, y'all. You got to make sure you don't get hit by cars when you're playing in traffic. You, you should be real safe. Cool cat, cool, 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 cool cat, cool, cool cats. Kid, all the kids love the cool cat. And, and I hippity hop to the hip hip. And shut up. Oh, so sweet. So let's have fun and do a repeat. The credits are all him. Yeah, I mean, he thinks he's like a real movie producer. It's in, it's like all these guys are 60. They're 60. It's like you've it's same thing I said everything. You've seen movies, right? You've seen them. This isn't what they look or sound like. Any you've seen movies, right? Right. <laughs> hip 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 the hop 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 i got a story to tell you about the coolest cat his and i'm gonna get you too <laughs> there's two more minutes of this he's the rap master and everyone knows it's true so you better not forget so you're cool too so if you want to rap and be real cool then think of cool cat and the rhymes will come to you some rappers talk about crime and violence but the real ogs preach that peace is power i bet ask what makes cool cat the rap master then they hear his rhymes and they know the answer so if you're not cool but want to be, then find cool cats so it can be a reality. There ain't no hate and all is great because cool cat is full of love for all his mates. I rap this beat to make you better because in this crazy world we all need to come together. He 
He's smart and he can say his ABCs and he can learn to make the sounds. That's the other thing is like Derek himself is confused about what age group this is targeting. He says it's good for elementary through high school kids. But like a lot of the songs are like he knows his ABCs and he can add real good. And then like the videos focus on coronavirus and deadly poisons and gun safety it's all over the place it really is like what what is this guy up to how how by the way in in the past we used to get like uh you know at 6 a.m people used to we our numbers used to go down because of uh the bs show and now we get more people watching the last two hours of show than we do in the first two hours. It's almost like, are people sending people over from the BS show? <laughs> uh, Tommy NC 2010 has some new stand-up comedy. Um, I thought we should watch. But we can get to that later. Real quick, uh, Bauer has put out a video overnight, which I think... You know, deserves some immediate attention. This guy is on a some sort of self harm watch for sure. Good morning, everybody. Well, it might not be morning when you watch this, but I mean, this was put out last night, so this is fresh. This is fresh, fresh, fresh. But it is for me. I had a dream, and I needed to tell you the story of the dream because some these light will guide me home. Times. People are able to interpret dreams better than I can. Bauer has a better bathroom than Chad. Now, I only just realized this because we're watching Bauer in his bathroom, but Bauer has cabinets under his sink. Bauer has a countertop to put hand soap on next to his sink. Chad doesn't have a counter to put soap on, to put his phone down on, to, you know, he admitted he puts his phone in the tub when he's pooping. Bauer has a nicer bathroom than Chad. Holy shit. Holy shit. Like, I just realized it, and it's true. And... It's changed my whole life. I mean, wow. I I really didn't think about it till now. All Chad has in his bathroom is a pedestal sink and lost dreams, you know? That's really all he's got. But I also like to share the stories of dreams because the slogan goes, our dreams might become reality. The slogan? Oh, yeah, the slogan for dreams, Dream Corp. Welcome to dreams, where dreams might become a reality. I mean, anything might become a reality. You know. Anything just could be a reality. Uh, what did Chad do to hurt Brad's feelings? I don't know. That's why we should get them all on one day, I think. Uh, F it. Derek has me convinced I'm finally going to live my dream and become an executive producer of a major picture show. Yep, yeah, handler, go over there, purchase some props, let us know how it all works out. Mommy and Daddy sent me over to film the cool cat movie. I got a cool drink that made me real sleepy. I woke up smelling like bleach and everything hurts now. Even my special place in butt. When I asked when the movie is coming out, the guy just kept laughing and sent me home. Jesus Christ, you're saying Derek Savage is fucking children in his movie? Okay. But sometimes all dreams are not perfect and scary and sometimes all dreams are not perfect. I've never heard things put so eloquently. Sometimes all dreams dreams are not perfect. Ah emotional. And some dreams seem so real. And 
many of you know my overactive brain. My this emotion. is what he always does. Like I, I sorry. I wish I could turn off my critical thinking, my overactive brain. He did a video recently about how he, th he thinks space isn't real. He's like, just think, people. You think we're actually going into space? Emotional struggles, um, my family issues that have really been creeping around again in my life at this moment. Ooh. And I tend to take everything into my sleep because I constantly think, overthink, worry, anxiety, et cetera, so on and so forth. This dude is even scared of dreams. Yeah, he's afraid to go outside unless there's an old puzzle <laughs> that he can pick up. And I have dreams <laughs> that revolve around my life. Fuck. Deep, deep stuff. And this dream that I had was really intense. Um, and we can interpret it, or I can give it an interpretation at the end of it, but let me tell you the story of the dream. And first off, I just want to- This is the story of a dream. A Michael Ray Bauer made his own cream. Laying on a futon in a studio, just swigging his little peen. This is the story of a dream. Say thank you to everybody that watches these videos. I know they are not- Imagine him just tossing and turning on his futon. Maybe very exciting, very, you know, edited. I had a dream that all the Ninja Turtles on my pizza box came to life and started dancing. Very energetic from my part, um, but this is my life. And like I've said in other videos, thank you for going on these adventures with me. And I am hoping for more exciting content in the future, but my life seems to always be doop, boop, 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 doop, boop, 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 doop, boop, 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 boop. Hold on, how does it go again, Bauer? Up and down, up and down. Bauer, I forget how your life goes. Uh, this could be another classic Bauer loop. You know, show as the story goes. Wait, where is it? Where did it go? And I am hoping for more exciting content in the future, but my life seems to always be doop, boop, 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 up and boop, 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 you know, show as the story goes. So here's the dream. Please hit that like, that subscribe button. Consider picking up some merchandise. Hit that like button. Down below. All information. Becoming a member. Appreciate you. Love you. Podcast coming soon. I promise. It's going to happen. It really is. It's really coming. Walks and podcasts. <laughs> Hopefully before the new year. I know, uh, right? He's acting like somebody else is in charge of it. <laughs> it better come out soon, I hope. It's like, if only you knew. I, I have some issues that I have to deal with and clear with, but... Yay! Let's talk about the dream. <laughs> so in the dream, I'm lying down on a bed or a couch. Again, it really, really wasn't specificated. Specificated. But all of a sudden... You know, this overwhelming f f feeling of, like, sadness came over me. Then I looked toward a window, and then this white cat jumped in the room. And mind you, I don't even know what room it was. You know, normally there was a bed. It was clean. It definitely wasn't my house. I don't got any of that stuff. Normally, it would be either your place of residence or someplace you remember. And <laughs> I think it's what most people would call a home or a house. I'm not sure. I always have dreams of my first apartment that I grew up in. Many, many I have the, that dream many times, but this, I didn't know where this place was. It was, it was interesting. Then this white cat jumps through the window and I recognized it, but not really. And it was, it looked beaten. It looked like it's been living on the streets. Wow, Michael Ray Bauer is having a dream about street 
beat up street pussy. <laughs> With, you know, the other cats for many years, but it seemed familiar to me. But I didn't recognize it. Meaning a beat up white pussy. That's what he's dreaming about. Like, oh, that's a cat I've had or I've owned. Whoa. But unfortunately, in this country, women get a choice. And I'm more of a dog guy, and I have owned one cat in my life, but I didn't recognize it, but I did. It seemed familiar. It's Phoebe's grandmother. Then cat walked around the room, and then I just felt empathy for it. I was like, man, this cat has been through a lot. This cat has been through a lot. Maybe the cat was making fun of your house. Maybe the cat was going like, wow, I can't believe this guy lives in here. He's been through a lot. This guy's been through a lot. The cat was making fun of Bauer. Like, this is the worst dream I ever had. New from Silk Shitty, Cool Cats, Cool Sauce for Kids. The first and only hot sauce for kids. <laughs> Pour it on your Lunchables. Daddy Derek also says it's great for kids that like to eat ass. Silk, Silk City, Cool Cats, Cool Sauce for Kids. New from Silk Shitty, Cool Cats, Cool Sauce for Kids. The first and only hot sauce for kids. Pour it on your Lunchables. Daddy Derek also says it's great for kids that like to eat ass. Jesus Christ. It's the only hot sauce that won't sting your asshole. Melts in your mouth, not in your anus. And then... Then somehow the cat jumped onto the bed or the couch or wherever it was. Somehow. Who knows how anything jumps? And then I heard a meow. Like a really, really crying meow. And I knew something was wrong that I needed to pick up this cat and love this cat at that moment. What? Even though I technically didn't know, you know, where it came from, whose it was, but it seemed familiar, but it seemed beaten and torn. So I took upon that energy or that feeling to- Let's go, Natalie Umbruglia. Pick the cat up, look in its eyes. And I heard another meow. And then something within me told me to pet that cat. I mean, this is starting to sound made up. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then the cat, and then, and then, and I, you know, behind the ears, make it feel, you know, cats like it when you do it, make it feel good or whatever, you know, behind the ears and cats like it when you make them feel good or whatever. So I did that. Then the cat started to like try to purr. And I remember like, Cats sometimes purr, you know, when they're happy or when they're in um, with their master or whatever. They're they're in a good moment of life. So I took that opportunity. This guy knows a lot about animals. Opportunity while hearing that purr to take the cat and put it on my chest and continue petting it. <clears throat> and then my tit rolled over and killed it. I killed. I dented a cat with my nipple. And then um. I decided to purr with the cat. What the know, fuck? Like, what the fuck? I'm happy or it's no. okay. I don't know what I was feeling. So I started purring with the cat as well. I put put the cat here. Then I started pulling my um, mouth toward the cat's ears. And I was like, purr, purr. And then I heard, I felt like something from the cat, like maybe a movement or a shake or something. And then... I just purred for a minute or two and, and petted the cat. <clears throat> <clears throat> Forgive me, guys. <clears throat> it's a little bit cold. Um, and then it just felt like it stopped. I always clear my throat when it's cold. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm cold. <laughs> Moving the cat. Then I, I looked down and it wasn't moving. And it wasn't reacting to the purge in the ears that I was giving it. And then I kind of picked up the cat like to, to look at its face, face to face. And then I looked in the eyes and the eyes were now 
Oh yeah, somebody said that I didn't catch him the other day. He said uh he had he uh uh his brother or something has psoriasis of the liver. And I assume he was trying to say cirrhosis, but he said he said his brother had psoriasis of the liver. Which sounds way worse than cirrhosis, to be honest with you. Psoriasis of the liver. Okay. For some reason, they were like a ruby green. If there is a green ruby, I think there are. But it was like ruby green, but it looked dead. It was ruby green. You know. Like uh, Dorothy Slippers. Her ruby green slippers. The one she wore to head off to the... Fire Engine Red Emerald City. <laughs> you know. You guys know colors, right? I don't have to explain it to you. I knew the cat had gone. And that was a shock. I was like, the cat died in my arms? And it was really, really unsettling and scary. And... Now the interpretation part. What does that dream mean, if anything? I had some ruby green cat slippers made. Please let me know your thoughts down below. I can only interpret it with things that are going on in my life. And my brother, his body is breaking down. <clears throat> I took it to mean that I just can't hold on to pussy. What do you guys think? <clears throat> And he's in and out of the hospital now a few different times. And it doesn't seem like his body's going to get better, but he's clinging on to life. And maybe internally, like the cat was some sort of amalgamation of my brother. Is that the right word? I don't know. Of my brother, where they just need love at the end. Get well, get well soon. We want you to get well. You know, maybe that cat had a weather-beaten life, like a really bad life. A weather-beaten life. That's why it looked beaten and torn and, and wore out when it entered the room, you know, through the window. But it seemed familiar to me, like maybe I've loved it or liked it many years earlier. And then the cat was like meowing for love. And then I gave it love and respect and shelter. And then in my bosom. My bosom cat. The cat was like, I'm ready to die. It was the cat's time. The cat was ready to die. <laughs> it was supposed to happen. Chilk, shitty, hot, Sosh has asked. If they can develop a hot shout for me too, Daddy Derek. Donkey lips. What's young do? Pepper. Squirt shows. It's good on everything. Toilet tacos, house? everything. It's spicy and delicious. Uh, great to take along with you on Walkie Talkie, -ish, where you find some McDonald's. It dries still firm, gluey paste, making it perfect for holding your trash jigsaw puzzles together once you finally finish it. I'm planning on approving it in a day or two or five or 30 once I've fixed my issues that I'm dealing uh, <laughs> with right now at this moment. Shalute my shorts, you cowards. Shalute my shorts, you cowards. Oh, God. Please, please, please. Can we get... By the way, is... uh is uh What's his stupid name? Uh, Chandler. Is Chandler around? Or is he over at Steel Toe today? Chandler, I, this isn't a money bag or anything like that, but Chandler said he had a bunch of bottles of... Uh, Silk City hot sauce. So Chandler, if you go to nobodylikesonions.com, you said you would send them in. Our my PO box is of course uh here, but it's also on the uh the website nobodylikesonions.com. We're gonna be doing PO box this Friday. I have some birthday presents in there that we haven't gotten to, so uh we'll begin to those. You could send stuff into NLO, nobody likes onions, care Patrick Melton, 4948 Mountain Vista Street. Number 13932, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89121. Send it in. 
We'd love to have your stuff. If you have an art project, Cardiff's Kids, send it in. Do you have a keychain, Flat Cat? Send it in. Do you have a hot sauce, Chandler? Send it in. We'd love it. We'd love it. I'm not saying that's my brother. It might be me. But I don't want to die. I love life. Even though I don't do much in life, and I live a very simple existence nowadays, I still love everything about it. Uh, back when I was in Hollywood, the hustle and bustle, <laughs> I remember my days on the Salute Your Short set. So much cocaine, so much pushy, so much partying. After parties. I mean, sometimes we get so drunk, you know, with all the guys from Hey Dude. We just got fucked up. But now I live a simpler life. It's much more quiet. But back in the day, when I was in Hollywood, me and Ashton Kutcher, we did. One day we really forgot where his car was. We were like, dude, where is your car? That's a good question. That's a good question. So I took picks up that cats and I pet it and Emil, it starts purring. So as I starts purring with the cat. So I looks at the cats and then I fucked that cat real hard. Jesus. I was afraid that I might have killed that cat because as it starts turning greens. Like a ruby. But then the cat turns around and says, hey, I'm cool. Cat now. So that's the story of how Cool Cat was created. And if you send me your kids, I'll turn them into real cool cats too. But first, they have to drink the bad dog's orange death poison. It's real funny. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Remember when the Dirty Dog had to. But yeah. Was that cat my brother? Was that. Cat, my brother. <laughs> okay. Was that cat my spirit that I need love and then I'm ready to go? What the fuck? Like you get love right before you die. That's kind of what it might have felt like. The cat needed love to die. Pretty interesting, guys. It isn't. It is. You had a dream where you pet a cat. Is that, am I summing it up? Are we done? <laughs> um, yeah, please let me know your thoughts down below. I'm going to leave the video this simple. But I appreciate you guys for listening. And, you know, I needed to share. Of course, there's two more minutes. He's wrapping up. For whatever reason, my mind, my body, my soul needs to share some of these dreams or stories or just talk to you guys. Have a beautiful weekend upcoming <laughs> for everybody. It's He made this Sunday night. And he signs off with have a good weekend. He made this Sunday night. He made this 11 hours ago. You're probably watching the video on Sunday or something. I don't know when I'm, I'm going to post it, but I love you guys. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. So maybe he made this before last weekend even and just put it up Sunday. I mean, what a nut. And try not to let the problems in real life get to you and tear you down. It's tough. But I appreciate you guys. It isn't. It isn't. Don't let anything tear you down. Just, just. You'll be fine. We'll talk to you soon. Let me know what you thought of the dream, how you would interpret it, and let me know some of your dreams as well below, if you don't mind telling me that kind of shook you or sh Guys, we're going to give a t-shirt away to the best dream in the comments today. If you're liking the show, hit the like button. That's very important. But in the comments, not in the chat, this will have to be later on in the comments because I want them to all be seen. Everyone write your dream. Everyone write your craziest dream in the comments below. And the one that gets the most thumbs up after uh, 48 hours will win a shirt from our store. Nobodylikesonions.com slash store. We'd love to hear about your dream. How crazy is your dream? Did you ever pet a dog? 
What about a turtle? Anybody ever just uh, have a weird encounter with a sea bass or any sort of uh, mar- marmoset? <laughs> Let us know. Let us know below your wildest dream. <laughs> We'd love to know your wildest dream. Stayed with you or that you remember. like a cat came in my window and I pet it. So pretty interesting. <laughs> remember forever. I've had a few of those. You guys saw my other Illuminati dream. <laughs> that, that stayed with me forever. This is one of those. <laughs> the Illuminati is still in my body. Oh, it was very unique. A cat sat on me, and I gave him love. I mean, that's not unique. <laughs> he's he's blown away by this. He's he's like, guys, I had to share. A cat came up to me, and I pet it on my lap. What do you think it means? Uh, it means there was a cat, and you were the comfiest beanbag chair in the room. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. And then, like, he just died. Or he gave up on life or something. Sounds like what your dad did the minute you lived with him. After receiving love and affection. Very, very interesting. Maybe you're so toxic your love kills. Did you ever think about that? How come nobody ever interprets it the bad way? I love you guys. We'll talk soon. This is it. I gotta go. I've had about enough. It's time to shine off. Michael Ray Bauer, Ober and out. Ober and out. What do you think he's talking about? What do you think he means? Does anybody have any ideas? Bone, and thank you for becoming a member for eight months. Bauer has cabinet doors, unlike addicted to profits. Yeah, he has cabinet doors. He has uh, bathroom countertops. In many ways, Bauer, he didn't get assistance getting his apartment from the government or the nearest guy with a uh, primate name, right? Snackwell Apes. It's a low-carb cookie and also a monkey. Uh, LL Cooley, I don't even listen to my wife's streams. Jesus. Wow. Why would you, though, you know? wife's dreams uh ladies and gentlemen we haven't believe it or not Haley Sachs Mrs. Dow Jones who we have not covered in quite a quite a minute so I have has a, a podcast she has just launched her YouTube channel was dead for months and now she's launched a podcast and put up three videos in the past couple weeks and the podcast, you'll you'll never, I mean, this is right up there with, uh, what's his name, Caleb Hammer or Graham Stephan in the Iced Coffee Hour. Haley Sachs, who lives with her father and uses his money, failed stand-up comedian, failed actress. She's now trying to be Mrs. Dow Jones. And teach you about how to get rich, even though she gave a TED talk on on money, but it was it was remember like it was literally there was nothing in it about finance. She was like, Haley Sachs, you know I'm good with money because my name's Sachs, like Goldman Sachs. It's like, ugh. Mr. Panhandler says your episode with her in studio was on 24-7 this weekend. It's bad. It's bad. Douglas W. says she's super hot. Come on. That's inappropriate to do I that. I always wanted my own little kitty cat. I will name him George, and I will hug him and him and squeeze him uh, and pat him and pet him and rub him in the caress yeah, him. Yeah, this is right. Snap his neck and then fuck him. Jesus. His name was George. Uncle Patty likes that game, too. Ah, uh, kitty cat came through my window and I loved him and squeezed him and petted him and I named him George. And I loved him and I loved him and I loved him. So, yeah, so Haley Sachs, with her 40,000 Twitter subscribers, has launched a podcast 
And it's called How I Got Out of $70,000 of Credit Card Debt in My 20s. By the way, this bitch can't stop sending. I, I Somebody signed me up for her newsletter. She sends out like a newsletter every every three days. Uh, uh, she's making no money from this. I mean, it's just like, I can tell you. She's, she had a Black Friday sale to like sign up for her, her e-course on financial, becoming a financial powerhouse. Remember we watched the video, like, what I spend in a day in New York City. She's like, had to have a boba tea, then jeans, but first coffee, but first pet a cat until it dies. <laughs> Beloved Chatter said, why won't Bauer do this show again? Uh, we're haters, and we've offered him too much money. I don't know. Ask Corn Dev. I don't know if Corn Diff's at work or he can call in. I, I, Corn never calls in, but if Corn Corn Diff three two three eight two five four nine nine zero, you interviewed him. If you could call in and give us a summary, so we don't have to like you know watch Corn Diff. Ugh. <laughs> no, I just haven't had a chance to watch. You know, it was over Thanksgiving weekend, I think, and I haven't had a chance to watch. But Corn Diff basically said he was not interested. So. Yeah, I've offered to buy him a computer. I've offered to give him. I've offered to buy him a computer for a conversation. Come on and just hear me out, and then you can walk away and go. Sorry, I can't. My self esteem couldn't begin to handle that. Fair enough, but like, just hear me out. Conversation. You know, it's not like you're gonna come on here and we're just gonna be like fatty, 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 kill the cat. Fatty, 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 fatty. Way too fat. <laughs> like we're just gonna. It's just a talk. But no, no. Uh, all right, Mrs. Dow Jones, the uh, <laughs> the Wall Street waif, the uh, the financial guru. If you can even like get past her hotness to listen to her financial advice, you'll be you'll be lucky. The podcast is thirteen minutes long. It's a banger. It's a banger. Oh, no. Donkey Lips has one more comment. I used to float. <sighs> Meow. I just fouled old. I used to know. But I'm not sure now what I wish made for. What was the sky made for? Nickel, you was made to shut the fuck up. Nickel, you was made to shut the fuck up. I had the best day with you today. I had the best day with you today. Hit the like button if you hate Adam Sandler's daughter singing Taylor Swift ballads to 10,000 people. You know. I had the best day with you today. Haley Sachs, Mrs. Dow Jones podcast. Here we go. So I had a bunch of credit cards and I maxed them all out in the period of a year. Now I will say this. Haley has done something. This is the least gross She's ever looked. She doesn't look wet. It looks like a non-Dominican got a hold of her hair today. Um, I don't know what this... What does her necklace say? Miss? So this is her logo for Mrs. Dow Jones. It's just MRS dollar sign. This woman's not married. You don't get to call yourself a miss. Um, but this is the best she's ever looked. It's the best her makeup's ever looked. It's the smoothest her skin has ever looked. It's her hair looks clean. Like, I, I'm not kidding. Like, this is the hottest Haley Sachs has ever looked. And I'm sure it gets grosser as time goes on. <laughs> Everybody in the chat has gone, 
That's a man, baby. <laughs> Possibly. Here, and so it was up to almost thirty thousand dollars. Wow. I ended up taking out a personal loan to pay all my credit cards off. Here's the kicker, though. You that doesn't work if you keep using the credit cards after. So and. She's like, no, no, I never heard of that, no. Did you put a band-aid on the problem? Yeah, well, I doubled the debt in oh, another year. You doubled your debt? Yeah, it was like up to 70. Whoa. What's up, rich people? It's me, Haley, AKA Mrs. Dow Jones. So now she's back to doing this again, and we're back to the old hideous Haley. You're not good solo, Hale. We need you in a group where you, you know, the worst you look like in a group is the grenade. And your hair does need cut. I mean, you're getting, it's getting down to, first of all, it shouldn't look like you just got out of the pool. <laughs> you shouldn't always look like. You just got out of the pool and your hair is trying to crawl down to get away from you. It's bad. And the face, this is all just come back full circle now. The dark lines, the bags under your eyes, the horrible complexion, the man jaw, the puffy cheeks, the unibrow. The, it's all just come back. I don't know how it got bad again. I think I see a mustache. So it just got really bad. We've got the most basic bookshelf behind you. I'm surprised there's not the stupid Tom Ford book every dumb bitch has on their coffee table. She's got a new iMac here. So she's doing very well. <sighs> Hi, rich people. Haley Sachs here coming to you from her dad's place. People are like, that dude changed my oil. Uh, Mr. Panhandler says not only does she gladly accept it in the ass, she demands it. Yeah, most most rich women just want to feel again. And if you're in your 30s and want to be rich, welcome to my Chanel. In this video, you're going to learn how to level up your finances in your 30s. Whether the video is called How to Get Out of Debt. How to Get Out of $70,000 of Debt in Your 20s. And then she says, in this video, you're going to learn how to level up your finances. I mean, those two things are very different. Digging yourself out of a hole and building yourself a mountain are two different processes. Whether or not you have a serious romantic partner right now, your money relationship is about to get serious. So her vocal fry fades out. Your vocal fry goes by. Your, your money relationship is about to get romantic partner right now your money relationship is about to get serious imagine letting this woman like tell you how finance works oh and don't forget to subscribe to Haley's diary my weekly newsletter we have i think seventy thousand. so i mean it whenever anybody does, it's like op with his hundred fifty thousand twitter or uh, Josh Denny with his 150,000 Twitters, or Opie with his 150,000 YouTube views, yet he's shitting himself when 60 people watch him live. It's like Haley does a podcast for 1.5 thousand people by telling you that 70,000 people tune into her for her advice. <laughs> it's like no one, Haley, no one's, you dumb bitch, you live with your dad. <laughs> Subscribers now, and you need to be one of them, darling. You need to be one of her subscribers. Her 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 newsletter is like, oh my God, look what this waitress did to earn money. It's like just like she finds news stories that mention like millennials and money and just sends them out there. Like, you'll never believe. Click this. And it just takes you to Wall Street Journal or something. Sign up at the link below. Okay, David, let's roll tape. We've got to find out who David is, and we've got to get to him. Hey, guys. I'm in the studio with Danielle. She the studio. She's in the studio with Danielle. She is a former 20-year-old, now 31-year-old, <laughs> and we are going to talk about the steps that you need to take in your 30s 
if you want to be financially successful for the rest of your life, because this is a decade where you can set everything up. I would like to know what you do for work, what your salary is. I'm a tax consultant in the city, and I earn $175,000 currently. Cha-ching! That's almost 60 k in a normal city. Woo! Love six-figure girls. <laughs> right. I mean, Haley's like, I wish I could have ever done that. I quit a writing class because Patrick Melton was in it once. I tried to do stand-up comedy, but I sucked. I tried to do sketch comedy, but I sucked. I tried a YouTube channel for comedy, but it didn't go anywhere. Now I see you, Danielle. I'm like, there's a gal who's got it together. She's <laughs> got her nice salary. She's living in the big city. But you were telling me earlier, that's not how it always was. So tell me a little bit about your financial habits in your 20s. So I used to be very careful with my finances until really a pivotal thing that happened in 2016. But I went through a pretty bad breakup and mm. I think the way I coped with it was spending money. Putting on a pussy hat and heading down to DC with 19 of your closest unemployed friends to yell at Trump. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't have. So I had a bunch of credit cards and I maxed them all out in the period of a year. Um, and so it was up to almost $30,000. Wow. And that would consist, it wasn't like going out and buying a Chanel bag. It was going out and running up bar tabs with my friends. Never. She's like, it wasn't something practical, like buying a completely impractical bag. Asking for money, going to nice restaurants, um, getting unnecessary blowouts for yeah. you know a, a random dinner <laughs> yeah things that like we're not getting my makeup done like things i didn't need to be spending money yeah on. and Haley's like who does your makeup do you have a guy because every time i get a new makeup person all their tools and brushes melt when they get near my face and nobody will ever come back or talk to me again i ended up taking out a personal loan to pay all my credit cards off here's the kicker though you that doesn't work if you keep using the credit cards after so and you put a band-aid on the problem yeah well i doubled the debt in oh, another year. you doubled your debt yeah i had all of these different balances all of these different due dates i felt like i was drowning imagine being in a studio and getting sound out of it like this we came to a studio to get this echo and room tone came to we drove to a studio for this can you walk us through your wake-up call? So I think it was just, I, I started like, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was having trouble making the payments. Like, I felt like I just had no cash, like, at all. And Yeah, you didn't. That's why you ran up $30,000 of the credit cards. I mean, I guess when you, if you're using credit cards, you can feel like you have cash. You don't. You don't, but. I, I don't know. It just, like, hit me. Because I feel like so many people in their 20s, you know, they're not thinking long term. They have that lifestyle creep. Yeah. And and they feel that you feel that pressure. To Holy shit. Hold on one second. I just noticed something. Is she? You know, sometimes I blow my own mind. Is she moving around books in her pink iMac to set up different sets with the same shit? Look at that book behind her, Naomi. And this pink iMac. And then let's go back to this intro segment. It's Naomi with that blue book on top of it. It's the same one. And this is that pink iMac. The color on the back is, is bolder than the color on the front. And then this plant, I think. So you go over to here.
It's the plant. It's the pink iMac. It's Naomi with the blue book on top. But this is a totally different side of the room. So she she moved the books over, moved the plan over, and then moved the computer over to, like, make a set. You don't have two stacks of books. You have to move this Naomi book around. I mean, unless she has two of those books, which is almost crazier. That's almost even crazier. I think I see ha ha history on the on the shelf back there. People are saying you it's not that she uses props. You guys are not focusing on the right thing. It's not that she uses props. <laughs> She's like scrambling or moving computers around. <laughs> Them, right? You're paying the service? It when they they build in like a fee into your monthly payment. Okay. So when I I mean it sounds like they're in an empty warehouse. That's what's crazy. Like they're in her studio. Consolidated everything. It it was about Naomi equals I O man. She's a man. Eleven hundred a month that I did she write Naomi? She has a ton. You saying she has a bunch of those books? Were there a bunch of Naomi books? Oh, wait, you're right. What the fuck? Here's another one. Naomi. What is this book? <laughs> what? Okay, now we got to find out what this book is. Naomi Pink Book. We found it. We got the book. It's a hundred and fifty dollar book. An updated followed attachments original collector's edition of Naomi. First published as a limited edition. Extra large volume gathers the best of Naomi Campbell's portfolio, recognized worldwide as a supermodel, entrepreneur, act so it's Naomi Campbell's like what? Photo book? Look, guys, Mrs. Dow Jones. She has three of these. Mrs. Dow Jones, guys, the financial expert. The financial expert has three copies of a $150 book with photos of a pretty girl in it. What in the fuck is going on? Okay, it just, it's just weird. It's just odd. I never stopped contributing into throughout all of my 20s it really is that tom ford book it's that tom ford book but she's got three of them daytois says she got them at 75 percent off of anthropology that edition has a vibrator in it it's ever like buy the book buy the books you wish to be in the world as soon as i could contribute when i started working i did yeah if i went into my financial oh how do i always pick the worst quagmire jawline f still frames of her mrs dow jones has the shortest foreheads i've ever seen it's very noticeable one was signed by naomi one by Br look if i went into a financial advisor's office and she just had model books laying all around Think about your finances as like, first we need to lay the foundation. Like it's sort of like, you can't build a sandwich without the bread, okay? My foundation was my father. He's very, very rich and I got tired of trying to make my own money. So now I just get rent from him. Another thing is my cell phone, for instance. I used to try to pay that bill on my own. Now I find it easier to do things that help me save money, like a family plan. That my father pays for. Okay, no high interest rate debt, which, good job, you paid that off. Yes. Also, you want to save an emergency fund. So let's say three months of bare bones living expenses in a high yield savings account. And then the third thing that you want to do, the bread, is you want to max out all of your tax advantaged accounts. So that means your 401k, which you've been doing, 
Roth IRA or traditional IRA. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you have health insurance that has a high deductible, you might be eligible for an HSA. I, do, I have an HSA. Which you can invest the money in your HSA, which is actually triple tax advantage. Money in is pre-tax. The money that grows, no taxes, and then you get to take it out. And she just looked this up before the podcast and so she's trying to remember it. So if triple it and then you put your money over there, or if you... In my case, buy a bunch of Naomi books, and those will usually appreciate in value. I t I've told you what to do to make money. This is my financial podcast. Buy Bitcoin. It's up $5,000 since I told you last week. I hope you made time this weekend to set it up, because congrats, you made money. It was 38000 last week. It's over 42000 today. Hello? It's about, I'm telling you, it's about to do one of its things where it goes up right before it crashes again. Buy it. Set up your Coinbase account today. What are you waiting? It's up five grand since I told you last week. Idiots. Or just go buy a bunch of Naomi books. <laughs> Retirement without paying taxes on it either. Once those are all done, then you can add the fillings to the sandwich, which are like, cool, do I want... Uh, anyone who says sandwich, sandwich. Jeru says, fuck, am I going to do a 10%? Yeah, yeah, 10% is all... First of all, 10% is a great return annually. <laughs> I, I, don't buy it, Jeru. It's not for you. Uh, but, but I don't think Trudeau will let you anyway, you fucking hack. I want to invest more in a brokerage on my own? Do I want to maybe save for a down payment? Then you can start being more creative about your finance. I never trust anybody with these finance. Like, um, I just like, if you didn't have to work for your money, if you never, if you never um, have, have ever done anything with your money in your life, why would we take your word for it? <laughs> you know. And you can be just as disingenuous you want to be. Sam B's in the chat going, weren't you on Shuby's family plan a while back? I still am. <laughs> Joke's on you, idiot. <laughs> it's called a friends and family plan. First of all, I pay $35 a month for unlimited data and calls anywhere in the world. <laughs> When I, when I lived in Australia for five fucking months, I didn't have to, it was $35 a month data and phone, unlimited. Yeah, yeah, I'm still on a phone plan with friends. You're right. I'm a fucking idiot. I should cancel that immediately, get it on my own plan and pay, pay $130 a month for less stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's like 17 of us all on that plan. Yep. Yep. I send him 250 bucks a year. Pays my whole fucking year of phone bill. What a loser. <laughs> yeah, Sam, it's be it, Sam, it's because I can't it's because I can't get it on my own. Let me just show everybody. It, it, it's cuz I can't get it on my own. I don't have good credit. I couldn't get my own phone. I suck. I suck. I couldn't get my own. Oh, I wish I could. Oh, my credit score is only 779. It's only 779. I couldn't get my own. I wish I had money. <laughs> can anybody, will anybody, will anybody co sign for my phone? Ah! <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, I've never been so embarrassed and busted. I've never been so embarrassed. You're on a family and friends plan with your phone. Fuck! <laughs> 779, that's it. It is down. I'm sorry. It is down. I did just run 900 hits on my credit to buy a car, though, just in fairness to me. <laughs> anyway, the point is, fuck you, you idiots. You're so dumb. Maybe I'll pick up a Naomi book and just quit this podcasting thing. It's not working out. It's not working out.
Muted Growl knows what he's talking about. I honestly invested uh, after your Bitcoin rant a couple weeks ago. Just checked. It's up 17.3%. I'm not saying it won't go down. I'm saying hold it. I'm saying long term, five years, it'll be up. I, I have a feeling it's about to go on a crazy run. I think it'll end up somewhere around 200K. But but mark my words, it will crash again back to 50,000. And I don't want you to lose your mind because you bought in at 160K and it crashed to 50,000. Okay? It's it's in its crashed state now. Okay? A few months ago, it was 17,000. It's at 42 now. How much longer do you want to wait on the ride up? Okay? So now's your chance. I'm done telling you about it. Just me and Muted Growl will get rich. Just me and Muted Growl. I'd max out your credit cards and buy Bitcoin today, but Haley Sachs thinks that's a bad idea. ...goals, but having that foundation is really important first, and establishing that in your 30s is monumental. When you start saving for a house, say, a down payment, yeah. would you also do that in a high-yield savings account? Like, how, how does that work when you're taking the money out of it? Like I think what you're talking about is, like, your timeline of your financial goals. Mm -hmm. So, like... Basically, the stock market goes up and down. She said stock market. Hold on. Goals. Mm -hmm. So, like, basically, the stock market. Stock market. Goes up and down, but over time, it trends upwards. But the reason that we don't put money that we need in the next five to seven years in the stock market like, that's why we don't keep our emergency fund in the stock market. Why, if you're saving for a down payment for a home in the next few years. You keep it in T-bills like her. I put everything I have in trans bills. That way I can take money out for shaving down my cheekbones or. Wouldn't put it in the stock market. You would keep these, this, all this money. in. A she really, she's reciting stuff like she just read it before the show. So why you don't put your money in the stock market short term is because it's very volatile and you could lose money. Like, don't put your emergency fund in there. It's like, thanks, bitch. I mean, these are the most basic tenets of investing. And she's espousing them like she's got some secret knowledge or inside track. And boy, you better get on board with Miss Dow Jones or you're going to miss the bus. You don't say. You don't say. Stock market's better for a long... Okay, hold on. Let me get a pen. A high-yield savings account. Is Her voice goes up and down more than the stock market. Sick fucking burn, dime card. Sick fucking burn. And you got her. Because say you put the money in and the stock market was doing great and then now it's not doing so well, you're going to have less money. If I put money in the stock market and it goes down, you're going to have less money. Got it. Sorry, but I just need to take a personal note for me. Can we get her a TED Talk, guys? I feel this information needs to get out to the public, guys. When when it goes down, <laughs> Kevin Brennan's not gonna like this. When it goes down, it's less money. Got it. Yeah. Than you initially did. Where <laughs> I, I I can't even believe she said that. Need the money, and you put the money in, and the stock market was doing great, and then now it's not doing so well you're gonna have less money yeah. than you initially did. Whereas if we put it in a high yield savings account, there's no risk there. We know it's just the money is gonna be there. Again, one of the dumbest things any financial advisor worth their weight in dicks would never tell you. When you put your money into a savings account at 5%, there's no risk. Yeah, 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 yeah. The US government's, you know, word is bond. There's always a risk if you don't have your fucking money. Do you think having your, your money in the bank means there's no risk? 
You, you, you think the United States of comedy is unfallible. <laughs> Infallible. You think the United States economy can't collapse. You think banks can't have a run on them. Do this in your small town. Get get everyone on your on five streets to go down to your local branch of your bank and ask for their money out and watch what happens. You will start panicking very quickly when you realize they ain't got 20 grand in that safe. Money's not real. Your money's not safe. I logged on to my bank app and it said I have $5,000. So they have $5,000. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They loaned that money out years ago to another guy. And now you both think you have $5,000. <laughs> that, that's why it's funny. It's not even real, your money. It's not even real anymore. It's long gone. What are you, some sort of commie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just the one. I just understand the levels of M. M1, M2, M3. This is all a simulation. I mean, it is. It is. You think the bank has your money? What an idiot. What an idiot you are. No, the bank has all my money. Right. <laughs> right, they do. Go get it. Go get it then. There, and it's going to earn a certain amount every month, and that's like fixed, okay. you know? So you want to. So, okay, I mean, look, the. the the odds of the banks going under and the economy collapsing are less than the stock market. But I'd argue they're more tightly connected than you, than you think. Corndiv says they told me it's insured. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who, Monsanto? Haven't you learned your lesson, Corn? Haven't you learned your lesson? They don't want you to plant seeds financially or agriculturally these are just facts the money, in the, stock market, we need to let sit and cook. the money in the stock market we gotta let sit and cook now going into your 30s what are you trying to yeah i i got a gr i got a green ruby mine that i want to sell you guys accomplish financially like do you have chad smart he has a cd yeah he's probably got nana zumok probably gave him a you know, one of those, uh, what do old people give their kids? A like savings bond. A savings bond. You put it in the bank. You protect it with, I could buy a house next to Carl. I could buy a house next to Carl. <laughs> right, Chad. I mean, come on, Chad. Have any goals? Um, I just bought an apartment, actually, in Sydney, so been doing that for a couple of years okay, so you i just bought an apartment in sydney well look at her look at her neck where is she getting these outfits is that a is that a christmas tree skirt just hit a major financial goal congrats Thanks. what was your biggest money mistake in your 20s not starting to save soon enough waiting to start on the 401k and financially planning what advice would you give to someone who dresses like this in the summer i mean what the fuck is she wearing frumple stiltskin am i right everybody i mean jesus who was in their 20s with their finances to start investing and in getting 401ks before i mean early in our 30s you know, we're looking good, and we're also earning more. Well, one out of the two ain't bad. And it could start to feel like things that are luxuries should become necessities. So you're ultimately not actually keeping any money and able to grow it into wealth. Yeah. Um, and it can be hard, because in our 30s, we're like, you, your dreams get bigger as you get older. And so really being able to balance that is so important fortunate how do you think this woman who's attractive feels being in a room with this woman who for all we know the pilots on 9 11 were just trying to get to their destination looked out their window saw her in a sky rise along the East River and decided to end it all.
you know, I mean, <laughs> how do you think that attractive girl feels being in a room with so many Naomi books that it's starting to give her eyes a pink permanent hue like that time when Kramer was next to the Kenny Rogers roasters I always say like focus on the big things like if you get the big things right then the small things don't sting as much like <laughs> you know if your fixed expenses are within your budget if they're only if it's 50 percent of your after-tax income that you're able to spend on your fixed expenses or less yeah. then you're doing great if you spend less, you're doing well. Huh. Huh. I think the biggest thing, Danielle, though, and you're such a good example of this, is, like, you can self-realize your financial goals. Like, you already hit a huge financial goal, which was to pay off your credit card debt. So it's sort of like, what's next? You know what I mean? Like, Well, just keep living in New York City and squandering it all on rent. You know, I... I I, I judge someone's intelligence at this level of like, you know, how long are you going to stay in New York, which is a rotting, you know, cesspool of loser's dreams. You know, I mean, just how long are you going to stay and just keep donking off 50% of your income to, a, to an apartment that you'll never own and never have a share of and never have any say in and never have any security. Just keep. Keep donking it off in the city. Subway and, and 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 transportation costs and cost of living. But at least it's shitty. At least even the nice apartment there just is in an old rat infested shithole. I got a friend on the Upper East Side. She pays like $7,000 a month. The apartment has a rooftop with chairs and a grill that she never uses. But every time someone comes over, she takes them up there and shows it off. Look what my apartment comes with. And a gym. It's like, yeah, you'll never, you don't use any of this. Everybody's, uh, you know, unless you're in New York City, normal apartments, like apartment complexes, compounds, they always have all this shit you'll never use. We have a clubhouse. In a movie theater, they all have a movie theater, and you can you can reserve this for you and your friends at any time to come down and watch a movie. And there's an old timey popcorn machine in the back that doesn't work, and you can use this anytime you want. You can use this anytime you want. <laughs> it's like you won't, you won't. They always walk you around all those stupid things. You know, like you have an 80, I, I have an 85 inch TV in my house. I'm going to go down to the movie theater. No, thanks. Oh yeah. The laundry room, the jizz filled hot tub. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your amenities are spectacular. It's great. NYC is fading away. Watch this guy. Um, I watch this guy on YouTube, Cash Jordan. He used to do all these like real estate apartment kind of videos. He still kind of does, but he's focusing more just on like New York falling apart. I think he like moved to Japan for a little bit with his wife and came back and now he's just kind of like documenting. It's like, you know, like New York's giving like every, every, uh, like illegal immigrant gets to stay in like a five star hotel, unlimited amount of time. Just have a five star hotel. You're from Mexico and don't have a job. Have a five star hotel. And now the now the governor's kicking them all out onto the street because he's like, hey, this wasn't a good idea. These people are getting really comfortable in their five star hotel for free. Right. Right. I got, he's like, they won't stop coming. I don't know why they won't stop coming to New York. I, Cause you keep giving them everything. <laughs> oh God. Dream big. Because when you have a why, it makes it a lot easier to know why not to buy something. Okay, guys, I'm going to let Danielle go. She's been so amazing talking to us about finances Oof. in your 30s versus 20s.
We heard all about her secrets. And Danielle, you're like... We, we literally learned nothing practical. We learned that Danielle had 20000 in debt. She doubled it to seventy, and now she's paid it off in her 30s. We haven't learned how we should do that. We haven't heard how to level up our finances. We haven't learned to, uh, a debt payment plan. How to ta What are some things we can do to start beginning to uh, decrease our monthly nut and start paying off that debt? Like, we don't get any of that. Just like, when you put money in the stock market, if it goes down, you have less money. You have less money now. It's like, thanks, Haley. Thank you, Haley. Gee, I can't believe you're not blowing up. I can't believe uh, half a percent of your subscribers watch your content. Why aren't more people watching it? Have you guys seen Mrs. Dow Jones, that woman on YouTube who teaches you how to, how to buy Naomi books? Oh, yeah, the bitch. The bitch. The bitch. What a dumb, dumb bit. I really want to get her financial training program, but I would never give her money or pay for that. So I won't. So I won't. But I want to. I, I love to know what's in it. Her course. Uh, course is a course. Of course. Of course. Unless, of course, the horse is by a... The course is by a horse, unless that horse is a famous horse. Her name is Haley Sachs. You guys remember Mr. Ed? Do you guys remember Planet with a Palette? She's a big fat. Um, it's really cool. She's a big fat bitch. She looks like this. <laughs> At least today she does. And we're going to be uh, diving into her, pun intended, today for a new recipe that's going to get us all hung. I, after I watch her, I get so hungry. But someone let me know. And I don't want to get banned off YouTube. So I got to be very careful here. Someone let me know. That this woman, hit the like button for this. Hit the like button. I feel it in my throat already as I begin to say this. This is deserve it of a like button smash if anything was. Someone let me know. That this woman, Rain, the planet with a palette. Has available for purchase clips, customs, if you will. I think they call them in the best customs. Uh, thank you very much, real quick, to Colin Madden gifting a membership. It is a new month. Get on the wall. We, we we also have our match game today that we're doing. Flat Cat Jessica's done a great job of that. Ugh. Ladies and gentlemen, I I'm I wish I I could do this and not make it gross for you. Unfortunately, a lot are nude, so we're not going to be able to. It took me. I'm not even kidding you. It took me. 24 seconds to tell if she was nude or not in the video. I had to zoom in and try to differentiate areola from regular skin rash skin. And then I was looking, I was like, is she, is, is she have a, is that a titty? You know, when you can't tell if something's titty, that's not a good looking bitch. I, I couldn't tell if it was titty. For seven to nine seconds. And then I was like, is that titty? Is that? Oh, it is titty. It is titty. And it was titty. And guys, if you go to Clips for Sale and look up SSBBW Renee, 
Star, R-E-E-N-A-Y-E, Star, with two R's. You're going to see. Now, look, the beauty of her nudes. Bink. Is that (laughs) she's sitting. None of these on the screen are nude, by the way. None None of these on the screen are the nudes. If I scroll, you will see the nudes. If I scroll. These are $15 a clip at Clips for Sale. And let's just see the description here. Watch my massive body grow as I stuff my greedy face. Be my seat as I become your fat femdom. See me struggle as I reach total immobility. (laughs) Hear my sexy moans as I masturbate and my fat belly. (laughs) And fupa start to quake with delight. We got a fish lunch. Let me count you down while you come for me in a sexy jerk-off instruction. And don't forget to come play with me and all my sexy plus-size friends. Hot new frequent updates and all your fattest fantasies will be fulfilled. Total immobility. Finish her. Now, again, I'm not sure who these are for, but if you click on them, you get a little preview here. I mean, I'm going to hope no nudity pops up. This is dangerous to do. Do you guys like tramp stamps? Oh, oh no. Do you like tramp stamps? Fuck yeah, baby. This looks like Florida. There goes nothing. So she's got a cute little Lego man hair snap on. Isn't that what that looks like? You can't tell me that like her hair doesn't look like she snapped it on like Lego hair. Got a lot of targets for you to jizz on. Baby got front. Ooh. I don't know what this is, but this looks like photos that come back from the Hubble when they like shoot the surface of Mars and they're like, I th- we think there's water in this crater here. We think. Okay, so this is the site of the lunar landing, the lunar rover. And then we think there might be water over on this, (laughs) over on this ridge. (laughs) Can ya? Can ya? They're like, this is sunrise on jupiter you can see here the sun coming up here's the line nighttime daytime (laughs) yeah she ate curds and way too much curds and way too much hold on i just got a venmo whoa from somebody named michelle i just got a hundred dollar venmo thank you michelle i'm gonna assume 
It's not her. I'm going to assume it's not Rain. My poor shocks and stuff. She just dropped her key. I, whoever's on the camera just said, my poor shocks. How do you see this? What are we doing? This is Bauer's wife. I mean, it's li it's like a human snowman. To drive with me in here. Ooh. Uh, Whoa. Was that a burp? I want to sit here and talk about the shocks when she gets in. My poor shocks and stuff. My poor shocks and stuff. How do you see to drive? No one should be gripping their tummy like that. Gripping your pillow tight. Enter my van. You'll never get out of my van. They cut it jaws of life. With me in here. Uh. And then she's got like a fat friend with her, but like her fat friend, you know, this bitch is like normal sized. So she only hang, you know, these other women hang out with her because it makes them feel small. <laughs> you know. Mm. Even her fat friends looking at her like you've lost self-control. You've lost all self-control. Crave quench. <laughs> Crave quench. Cheese steaks of the world. What is that? Where did she eat? Charlie's cheese steaks. The number one cheese steak in the world. Charlie's cheese steaks is like an airport cheesecake put or like in the mall. Malls and airports is where you should get cheese cheese steaks from Charlie's. Whoa. Who's Arthur? It's her ex-boyfriend. He went down on her once and he never came back. <laughs> Rest in peace, Arthur, wherever you are. She's out of breath. She got a box laying on her belly and she's just going. I'm so full. I'm so full. But that never stopped me. Panhandler is getting very upset. I've never seen anybody this upset. $50 upset. $50 upset. For the love of all that is holy. Please stop. Please. It's going to take another 150 for me to stop. Actually, Panhandler, you got to pick uh you got to pick a square. We're doing our match game, Panhandler. You got to pick two squares for your $50 for our match game. If you were paying attention earlier, then you'll have an advantage. But we need two squares. Go ahead and pick them here. Let me know which two. A4, E2. Pick two squares, Panhandler. Pick two squares. Max Bringle, Patrick, I can't remember the last time I laughed this much. Awesome. I mean, that's insane. You shouldn't be laughing. This is a sad disease. And it's uh, bad. Okay, C4. What did Panhandler say? He's saying C4 and E3. And also, DK just uh, popping in again. You get two squares if you want them to. You can wait until you see his. E3 and C4. Okay. E3 and C4. C4? A snipe request. E3 is already turned over. Are we paying attention? We need another one. E3 is already turned over. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Oh, boy. I love it when this happens. 
We're going to need another square. B2. B2. Let's see. Ban anyone for a week. Ban anyone for a week. No match. No match. DK, are you doing one? Are you doing squares, DK? We got a $50 super chat from DK. Agree with Mr. Panhandler. Let's get a palate cleanse. Just heard Crutches is, is hosting Steel Blow Friday and Monday. Should be an energetic, amazing show. Well, you know, I mean, you get a... Give my squares to Black. Who's Black? Oh, Black-Eyed Sue. All right, Sue, two squares. Let me know, Black-Eyed Sue, two squares. Two squares. Uh, Max Pringle, Patrick, I can't remember. We already read that one. Well, there is a there is a change subject reward on the board. Uh, all right, Black Eyed Sue, your squares. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We get two squares. This is our December mystery match game. Beloved chatter, Patrick skipped my super super chat. He's really fallen off. Um. No, no, I just haven't done it yet. C2 and E1. C2 and E1. C2 was... Snipe request. And E1 changed topic. So thank you for playing. It didn't work out. And beloved chatter, nobody forgot you. We love you. Village Idiot said time to log off the internet. We got him. And Michaela says she's Michelle, but she says she didn't send $100, but some Michelle did. Let me see if I can get a last initial. I don't want to dox. Oh, wait. But it's this very it's the same it's the literally the same uh it's literally the same image as your image. It is you. No? Come on. It is her. You said it wasn't you though, right? When it happened and you go, not me. I can't keep up with you bitches. I hope that was enough palate cleansing. I hope you're all ready for Morbid Leo bitch, clip bit, clip bitch, Morbid Leo bitch. I'm so full. Uh. Oh, it just replays the same video. Okay, I gotta find out. I gotta be careful because there's a lot. I mean, you can't you can't tell what's a titty. Um. Public gluttony on my new scooter. A glutton of my caliber with a belly this big. Whoa! I gotta watch this before I show you. On my scooter, snarfing down a hot dog. My brand new scooter. She's showing off her scooter like someone shows off a hoopty. How do you even get a camera down in her crotch like this? I didn't get $75 from anybody Saturday. Fuck your mom. Unless I did. Unless I did. Colt C's finally here. He says uh, he's having breakfast, and this is perfect timing. A glutton of my caliber with a belly this big. That's a tumor. You shouldn't have a, a distinct... That looks like the nose of one of those blobfish. And I don't want to get anything from uh, YouTube. That's not pussy. That's not a pussy. I know, like, if you zoom in on this enough, you go like, whoa, are those lips? <laughs> no, 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 no. But I am worried about, like, the hard circular whatever this is. is that the baby is that the bait like look at the way she pulls it out 
on my scooter, snarfing down a hot dog, hot dog, mustard, on a scooter, the size of a house. You Now this is a game I like to call This is a game I like to call Count the Spider Eggs. No, okay. I mean how many There's just so many little here, 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 here like parts of your body have ro rolls that So here it is, y'all. Here it is, y'all. My new scooter. My brand new scooter. My brand new scooter. Back it up, y'all. Back, back, back. Back, back. Back in it up. Back, back. Back in it up. Back, back. Patrick, I'm watching your show this morning as usual, and you've really given me an idea to improve my finances while getting food without stealing it. Go to Clips for Sale and search for Feeding the Mud Shark. Watch my massive body grow as I stuff my greedy face. Be my seat as I become your fat dom. See me struggle as I reach total immobility. Hear my sexy moans as I masturbate and my fat belly and fupa start to quake with delight. Let me count you down while you come for me in a sexy jerk off instruction. Hot updates daily on Twitter before I delete them. This is my feed. This is my feed. This is my feed. Whoa. I gotta. I gotta really pause this so I can come. What's happening down here? Like, what is even... What? <laughs> this is the back, so I don't... Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't even... What? Even is that her vag is sagging? I mean, what the fuck? You've heard of a fat upper pussy area cult. This is a fat lower pussy. I mean, this is a fat lower pussy area. I, 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 I've never seen that part on a person. Like I, I've just, I've literally never seen anything like that. Is the BS show still live? This is too much. This is not comfortable. I feel like I'm literally going to. I'm just doing a little yard work. Fall off this chair. Oh, that's a good view. That was a good view of it. That's what's happening. Yeah, boy. Yo, yo, yo. Whenever, whenever the fat on your foot is like starting to work up, like everything else is sagging down her, her foot, the fat has nowhere to go. So it's, it's piling up. <laughs> like the top of her foot is low, is higher than her ankle because the fat's just literally like, piling up boat in the car Barry says I hate this I hate it she rolls a chair out to the mailbox to check the mail I don't know how many get back to the house I don't know is this what I was thinking trying to come to the mailbox <sighs> I've officially outgrown walking. So this is like, again, for like people who are into this, these are her little fetish vids, which are what, they're just what, I can't even show you. There's so many of her nude. Um, 
But then there's also... Mm, have you ever... I want you to put your cock in between these fat rolls and... All right, I can't show you this one. Have you ever been with someone as big? Now, I can show you this frame of it. Because fortunately... Or unfortunately... You can't see anything. But in a minute, the the whole top comes off and... This becomes untenable. Um, <laughs> no, thank you. In a minute, the whole top comes off, and I need blue blockers. Uh, and fat as me. Oh, yeah, I'm lifting up this big fat. No, no. Okay, I gotta find out when it switches over to the nudes. Hold on. Belly. She is wearing panties under there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want you to put your cock in between these fat rolls and fuck them. Oh, I'm getting so hungry and so horny for you. Mm, stroke that cock for me, baby. Are you gonna come all over my big fat 754 pound belly? 750 four how oh mm, yeah mm, have you ever been with someone as big and fat as me oh yeah i'm lifting up this big fat belly oh that's the one i can't show okay okay timestamp 337 we gotta we're gonna have to edit out a frame of that we're gonna have to edit out a frame of that that Probably blinded some people, and I apologize. That one, that one, uh, you might not even be able to tell the difference, but we, we got it. We got it. How about a weigh in? Ugh. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, we can do this one. Oh, yeah, these are great. She's got, and all these are for sale, guys. These are just 30 second. Um, these are just 30 second snippets of uh, masturbatory bliss. You know. Oh, gosh. I feel very confident about this way in. Moment of truth, y'all. Oh, God. Hold on. Oh, and fatter than ever, making me my dream weight. Well, my dream weight for now. We always know that that is an ever-moving target. Love the way the oil feels on my skin. Oh, gosh, I feel very confident. <laughs> People are saying, "Come on, man!" I mean, we're not ever stopping. I won't stop. I won't. I can't. Nope. Too many nipples in that one. Can't show you that. Oh, this is crazy. Whoa. Whoa. All right. You guys will not fucking believe this. What do you get when you guzzle down sweets? Eating as much as an elephant eats. What are you at getting terribly fat? What do you think will come of that? I don't like the look of it. Oompa, loompa, doompa dee da. If you're not greedy, you will go far. You will live in happiness too. Like the oompa, loompa, doompa dee do. To the juicing room. A big, giant, round blueberry. Mm, my cheeks starting to puff out. My big belly starting to swell. Oh. Starting? I mean, this is the finishing stages of swelling if there's ever. Oh, no. I'm so helpless and stuck on my back. 
It's the same thing Merch did when he walked away from the fight. I've been dreaming about this day forever. My body's blue, my huge belly's blue. Juicy belly. Oh. Shouldn't have had that everlasting knob stopper. A big. I mean. It just, like, every time I want to get away from this page, there's a new video that draws me back in. Every time. I think I'm done. We pro we, we can't possibly um, watch her do. Oh, that's way too much nipple. Mm. Oh, God. There are a lot of aerial shots of her nude. Like, top down. Oh. As long as it doesn't show her pussy, then. Like, I don't. I, this is all very dangerous, but I don't care. It's making several people vomit in our chat room, and I find that very, very funny. She can do a walkie talkie, but Bauer can't. That's a good point. She's out there walking around, and Bauer's afraid to leave his house. Addicted to the ubiquity, I'm not really comfortable with the direction the show is going in. A lot of people feeling that way. Um, and I don't know what to tell you. This is the new NLO. That's the one I like. BDSM. That looks like several people human centipeding together like how many dudes is that i see eight arms i didn't know she was an arachnid i mean it you know what i feel so you know what i feel sorry for oh god i feel sorry for this role there's not enough room for this little fella to get down here to eat like the rest of these rolls. Like this roll is down. This roll is down. This roll is down. But this little fella, he can't even sneak through here. Also, I bet that's a sweet, sweet area to fuck. Uh, this is way too far. No words. She looks like a pregnant Rottweiler. This is Twisted Zoidberg. What are you talking about? You guys think this looks like Zoidberg? It's not a good Zoidberg, sorry. Piggy play. Oh, yeah, piggy play. That's what, uh... Massive Jiggles. It's the name of my first album on Stand Up Records, Massive Jiggles. Oh, my Lord. Whoa, who's this? I'm Whoa. Whoa. There's a lot of, um, nope, cannot show you that. I'm going to come. Um. All right, one more, and then we'll do a recipe. Because I know you want to see her cook. I know that's really why people are here. Oh. So she does drive, or she used to. And honestly, Starbucks is usually my first breakfast. Starbucks is usually my first breakfast. Whoa, what was that? Hold on, what was that? Where's a boomerang when you need it?
Whoa, that was reminiscent of... Bubble gut. The bubble gut. I'm just so fat now. So I got this big thing of gainer powder. Okay. <sighs> okay. Um... I don't even know. And, oh, is Steel Toe doing a goal? Should we be on uh, Goal Watch? I don't even know. I I'm so distracted. Steel Toe Morning Show. Live. Whoa, they're not still at 185? Yeah, so fuck you. So I just, I've never liked him ever since. So I'm just like, fuck that. Oh, shit. This is exact. Yeah, I just got an email. Oh, no. And it said important information regarding your trip. And I'm like, you better fucking not. And it was from the airline. And I'm like, you better not change the goddamn. Got to wear masks, everybody. We got this new, uh, this new pneumonia thing coming out. Look, maybe every. Oh, Aaron's coming to Vegas this weekend to watch the Vikings play at uh, Allegiant Stadium here in Vegas. And, you know, Aaron's always talked about how him and his chick stay at Red Rock. They love to stay at Red Rock, which is a locals hotel way west of the Strip. And people in our, our uh, Discord were talking about that. And I, was like, and I was like, we should do a social engineering thing where, every, where everybody tries to call Red Rock to see if we can get their reservations canceled. Good, clean fun. You know, they're not going to be too fucked. They can just rebook a room. It's not going to be sold out. But, you know, you can call up Red Rock and be like, hey, this is Aaron M. Holt. I need to, I have a reservation coming in this week and, you know, wait for them to find it. You don't need to say a day. If they go, like, what day are you coming in? Be like, I'm not sure. My wife might have booked it with my card or, you know, the problem is she passed away. So we're going to have to cancel the trip. We got a funeral. And they just get their whole reservation canceled. So when they go to check in at Red Rock, they're like, what? Oh, what? Beloved Chatter said, oh, now room reservation uh, cancellation bits are funny. Yes, yes. Beloved Chat, they're always funny. I'm just telling you, I'm not falling for it. I'm just saying I wasn't going to be the bitch. I'm not the bitch. You're the bitch. Hit the like button or you're the bitch. Emmy Rossum has uh, the little Lemmy cute thing where it's like, no, it's it's perfectly cute. Yeah, nothing wrong. If with you it. think little Lemmy and Emmy Rossum look the same, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. One of them played a poor drug-addled woman with with tons of life problems. One of them would would love to achieve that one day. You know, I like I get why people enjoy the show. But I think you have to be invested in the side characters to thoroughly, like, love that show. And I really don't give a shit about anybody but Frank. Like I said, every time I watch that show, it just reminded me too much of the shit that I went through growing up. And I'm like, Well, he's covering Shameless, a show that's been off the air for almost a decade. Remember Shameless? You after Christopher... Mal Tune in tomorrow, where Aaron talks about his favorite episode of Cheers. It was on. Or I know it's still on, but, like, when it was running at that time, I stopped when he left because I'm like, I don't give a shit anymore now i've been watching i missed some solid law and order svu although the episode uh last night i was so excited to watch it because will sasso was in it i'm mm -hmm. like fuck it but he just plays an angry garbage worker whose daughter he thought had been murdered but it turns out she was just fucking her teacher who turned out to be her de actual it's dad. gonna happen they're 185 away from the goal on a on a Monday morning with seven minutes to go. Where's the plate, Aaron? Jeez. See, she like disappeared. Can you believe they're both wearing steel toe morning show iron on shirts? Like, can you believe they're both doing that? Like, it's insane that they're both doing that. They're like, please wear your iron on steel toe shirt. That's the uniform for Monday. We're all wearing our away shirts. You're at the hotel at the end of the episode. That's fucked up enough. We can just go with that. She's fucking her music team. Melton just watched Sopranos, so yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm not sitting here going, I stopped watching the Sopranos and went back and I'm watching the second half. It's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. 
And if you think I come on here telling you about The Sopranos, you're dumb. Like, do I ever come on and go like, guys, I just watched The Sopranos. Oh, my God. There's an episode where I assume you've all seen it and I'm dumb. So just letting you, I'm saying I watched it and it was good that I never watched it. But I'm not like coming on every day with like Sopranos updates. Like, guys, you won't believe what Tony did the other day. Everybody's world. Dad can't unsee that. He's telling you that you can't watch it because he's only into Frank. And come on. It's not the same. You find out. You that know you what? I thought her vagina felt familiar. Well, I mean, we're like five minutes away. What's his, what's his thing? Is he not going to do it? Look, I'm not saying that you'll never catch me in hypocrisy. I'm just saying, like, don't you got to have true equivalencies? You can't. Or something. Will I love how they're not pushing a whole uh, incest is the best message? In I make plenty of. Uh, I do my own thing. Not squeezing it in every way they can. Yeah, the episode is uh, called Send. Why is he line. putting this off? It's getting awkward that they're not begging for money now. The guy they framed. The guy they framed for the murder was uh, dressed as a clown in a nightclub. A masquerade. Oh, oh I, yeah. I thought they were calling it send in the clowns because much like a clown car, people kept coming out of her vagina. Um, <laughs> first they came in and they had to come back out. Rex Stark parody account says Sasso was also the father, mother's father, so he was actually the grandfather. I mean, they might as well have gone that far. April and I at the end of that episode were like, holy shit, we really didn't need to do this. We really went a lot farther than we That's That's going to be the epitaph. On the Steel Toe Morning Show when it's dead. Holy shit, we really didn't need to do this. <laughs> Knocking out tomorrow. You guys have already started that. Uh, we're 185 away from tomorrow morning. And if between this morning and tonight. What? Tomorrow? We, um, we knock out Tuesday. That'll put us one week with no goals the day of, which is great. Uh, balls deep with five bucks says steel toe delivers a superior product thank you buddy 180 away from tuesday thanks a million i'm not buying uh, that troll balls Casey deep. says the blonde on balls F deep hangs out in our chat now i'm not buying your troll hi balls deep oh, what's her name she is she has like every character she looks at it's like are you gonna like so hold on now he's ahead now they're doing tomorrow's goal I don't understand. It's like the movie Tremors. What, Steel Toe? Why, is Reba McIntyre on there shooting at something? I'll take 20 from next week's goal and apply it. Yeah, I mean, it really is uh, baffling. I don't know. I don't know the strategy. But I'm not really qualified to talk about it. Can we watch uh, Planet with a Palette cook something? Oh, we don't really have enough time. Maybe we've done too much. Have you guys had enough fat for the day? I think I think it's I think it's uh, too much fat. Everybody's like grossed out. People want to like floss their teeth about it. As long as she's cooking. All right, well, just I'll tell you what. We'll just watch a few more of her porn videos. I I get it. You want to see the good stuff. I just got to uh, screen them and make sure she's not whipping out titty. We don't really have to worry about her whipping out her pussy. Oh, God, there's the tits. Because, like... You can't see it, even when she does. She is proud of this scooter, man. She loves zipping around it. Here's her zipping around her scooter at night. I don't, I don't even understand. This is what happens when you're 730 pounds. I mean, I do look enormous on this bed. You don't look enormous. I mean... You look enormous from most interspace near Earth orbit satellites. You know what I mean? Like, it just, you don't look enormous. You're 730 pounds. You're 730 pounds. You don't look enormous. You are enormous. Not. Um... <laughs> 
unicorn. Apparently they need special equipment because I'm a big fatty McFat fat. And she's filming this the whole time for her fans. Like, they're going to love this. They're going to love this. Um. Thank God she's got a mask around her chin. <coughs> oh. I don't know what that noise was, but that scooter just yipped for help. <coughs> Did you hear it? Squeal? <coughs> She like, you know, when fat people are walking around a store and you and you see them like, and you're like, wow, that guy can't even walk. This bitch can't even scoot. She's on a scooter, breathing like people breathe when they're when they're running and walking. She's on a scooter going. I just realized we don't even have 200 likes. I'm definitely leaving. If we don't have over 200 likes in a minute, I'm definitely leaving. That's sad. And that's on Fearless. And that's on Justin Campbell and Fearless. Just murder them. Oh, I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of her. She can't get enough either, apparently. Ice cream dreams. I just got to make sure there's no nipples. Oh, she's like, sh oh, God, so many nipples. Oh, God. They start out normal with her just, like, eating ice cream, and then it just cuts to, like, her giant bulbous titties. My massive 8,000 calorie meal. I just ordered. I just. No, nope, nipples have to come out. So I think the ones at the beginning, like the newer ones, she's not nipping out as hard. And I. Re Fattest ever weigh in. Oh, no. Oh, no. If you want to know what it would look like to bang this chick from behind, you're about to be in luck. Oh, no, people are taking away likes. I see the bit. I see the bit. All right, take away likes. I don't, here's a little secret. I don't actually care. <laughs> take them down to zero. Take them down to zero. We're still watching it. You wrench your eyes out and see if I give a shit. Take them all. <laughs> this gives you a good look at what it'd be like to pump this bitch from behind. And get ready to brush your teeth. And I really realized how huge I've gotten. My thigh roll. Did you see the thong? What, what's even the point? This is her thong? I like it when your booty goes. Donk, 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 donk. People hate it. Look at him signing off. Unliking. Good. Good. We'll do hours more of it. Eye rolls are just so. When I. That's what we've been waiting for. Yo, bend over and let me get at it. Let me get in there and work. <laughs> and again, there will be nine black guys watching this going like, damn, like, fuck. I like, like, God damn, son. I like to shit. Mm. Yo, Miss Lady, Miss Lady, Miss Lady. Let me get up. Eh? Let me, let me get up. Eh? <laughs> uh all right unless we get over 200 i'm doing this all day tomorrow so you keep going down you don't get my likes above 200 we do we do four hours of her tomorrow how dare you punish my algorithm i'll show you
four hours of it tomorrow. Get me back above 200. You know, I could, I'm the puppet master. Look at it. Look at it. Is that a scale back here? What is that? <laughs> oh, you guys know I'll do whatever I want anyway. <laughs> That's her butt. That's her butt. <laughs> what a new grift, liar. Yeah, there's there's always a new grift. That's her butt. Be la da be da ba. La ba da ba. Look at that butt. Look at this butt. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think that it's so clean you could eat? Wouldn't you think that it's nice? Nice to be inside of her. Look at those folds, treasures untold. How many pizzas can one woman hold? Looking around here, you think, sure. She's got cellulite. She's got asses and dimples aplenty. <laughs> She's got Skittles, they fell on the floor. <laughs> you want cupcakes? She's got 20. But who cares? No big deal. What is, what's this piece? That's like coming from the front. I want to be where those brimmers are. Ooh. My belly just hits my knees. Oh. I'm going to, I need all the Mexicans to come back. Whoever did this stucco work. <laughs> ah! Somebody get the flex seal. And this is why we sit while we're on the scale. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You guys like cake pops? What in that? Like I, we're gonna do a new game where we call we call it guess the kneecap. Like you get three guesses, and if you can point out which one of these bumps is her kneecap, you win money. We're the only show that does it. If you can find her kneecap, you'll win a hundred cash. Cool, calm, cash. <laughs> Find a kneecap, win big. Only on the Nobody Likes Onions program. <laughs> Just sitting on the scale has been come such work. She's like she's doing the thing, but she like because she knows people are the fatter she gets, the more these get horny people who pay for this kind of stuff are into it so she like oversells it like it's getting so hard just to sit can you believe it oh my god oh my god it's getting so hard just to think about eating am i right am i right uh goes to mr p pat i guess your mom is still around nice butts you think this is my mom? That's mean. Thank you for your super sticker waiver. Thank you. And thank you guys for taking away your likes. I guess I'm just a big loser. Thanks for hitting our goal. Playing the match game. Participating. Again, no show tomorrow morning, but there will be a show tomorrow, and uh, we'll figure it out as we, as we go. Zumok says, look what you've come to. That might actually be Zumok because he is, like, not speaking correctly. Not look what it's come to. Look what you've come to. Yeah, look what you've come to. That's how people talk. Let's see if it's the real chat because that would be great. It's definitely not, but just for fun in case it could be, would be, it is not. Okay. But imagine if it was. You can see like what it would be like if it was though. You can tell like what it like if she if if 
it has though, if it had been like what it was though, then it would be though. MSO says I am real. You're not real to anyone. We don't. <laughs> we're not Chad. We don't get. Oh, MSO's here. Oh, that reminds me. I want to do. It. Your manner is most unbecoming of a gentleman. Would you be high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet. They're full blown retarded or just high on cigarettes. The question posed to stupid hoes who don't get it yet. Excuse me, miss. Are you high on cigarettes? I don't know if the comedy hasn't hit them yet. They're full blown retarded or just high on cigarettes. All the laughter that you deploy if you listen to the show, boy Patrick Melton, Melton faces. Have you stacking that no low point? It's the low point, not the reason. The reason is fucking gold. Gonna make the taco pony party be a part of your soul. Gonna make you vandalize a van with a pedal sticker so bold. The family probably get arrested before they get down the road. A stupid motherfuckers just got N. Alone, other radio shows a straight bitch male prone. Talk shit on the youngins that nobody like past. Have my homeboy lame prank call him fast. Have him thinking that he hates him like right before he berates him. And the way that he baits him, put him right on blast. Like Patrick is an asshole and his show won't last. And every time I called, then he treated me like.